quickly destroy the Archaeotech engine. Nothing could be done hastily and prudently, Brother Barakia. So answers an apothecary.
destroy the Archaeotech engine. Nothing could be done hastily and prudently, Brother Marikian. So answers an apothecary. Everybody, let's see if this is working. Yep, it's all working. Welcome back to Angry Badger Minis. I just realized that I'm holding a blade like I'm gonna stab someone. That's funny. Anyway, um, if you were with us last night, I'm working on 400. Well, I guess 450, but or something like that. But basically, I'm on the brand new uh, package of an old discontinued game, Warzone Mutant Chronicles. And these guys are Proxy Guard, Krieg Death Corps, whatever, because they came out in uh, 1998, long before there were Krieg models. Um, nothing, you know, I mean, I have a Death Corps of Krieg Army. If you look on the YouTube, YouTube channel, you'll see where we assembled all of that and some other stuff as well as Gorg, you know, 3D printed Gorgons. Uh, Warhound Titan, uh, Imperial Knights, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to put all 400 of these together, clear this backlog, and then we will move on to... Um, this. Sh it, it should... Well, I say it should give me time. Um, there's stuff that I'm still... That should still be coming from the Imperium Magazine subscription... Uh, Necrons, some Space Marine stuff, and I believe some Admech stuff. Maybe some Sisters still, I'm not sure, but I think I'm at the end of the Sisters stuff. Um, so I'll need to put all that stuff together, and that will be next on the list after all 400 of these models are done. Um, as a matter of fact, I think what I'm going to do, because 
I'm going to go ahead and find these guys online and put pictures up for you guys so you know what it is that I'm doing. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Warzone. Mutant Chronicles. See if I can find one of each would be great. Of the models that I have. They had multiple factions for sure. Um, ah, there we go. Uh, well, it's not quite all of it, but let's see. You know what? I'll just put the box set up. And then if you guys would like, you can search for it. Uh, save image. Screen Hunter. War Zone. But yeah, we've got five boxes of these. And um, essentially what ended up happening was, again, there was no... Um, there were no Krieg Death Corps or whatever back then, and so uh, I bought these as a a proxy Imperial Guard Army as well as um, what you call it uh, Krieg Death Corps because I've always liked them, and uh, uh oh. Where did this guy come from? Over here, really? Um, and you got 80 miniatures in this box set for 40 bucks. Think about that for a moment. 80 miniatures for 40 bucks. How cool is that? And they're really not that bad, um, even by today's standards. Uh, I mean, given, you know, today's standards especially with games workshop are pretty high speed um, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a second uh, I'm gonna put them you know compared to say primary space marine or something I don't have any guard over here at the moment but in regards to like the old Cadians and the uh, Steel Legion and matter of fact they came out right before Armageddon Steel Legion 2 and then one of the biggest selling points for me was the gas mask. I thought they were pretty awesome. And they had, you know, the one army. I don't I don't know all the lore behind this. But as you can see in the picture, you know, um, one group almost looks like they've got, you know, inspiration from the Prussians or even, you know, Germans or something like that. And then the other ones, of course, have the, you know, the sci-fi uh, inspiration of British troops, you know, World War One kind of stuff. Um so, and the game was played with just two uh, D20s. Um, and it came with three books. One was straight up rules. Another one was uh, fiction or lore on the factions. And then another one was straight up fiction. Um, let's see, I think it was forces of war, rules of war, and then something else. I can't remember. Um... So yeah, uh, the only thing I had to learn here, and I think I have finally cracked the code, was how to get the most efficient, I mean, now mind you, trimming them up is always going to take time, but what was the most efficient use of my time to get the arms actually put on there and not glued to myself or whatever, and if you take a look at this, this is how all of these particular guys are put together with the hand over top of the gun. Whereas the other ones, let's see. These were some old ones that I had. Their hands are underneath. Um, so, in my opinion, still a pretty impressive model. Um, probably should have just showed you this one. You know, for, for 1998, in my opinion, pretty damn awesome. Uh, and especially as, you know, stand-in proxy guard or what have you, definitely awesome. Um, 
Oops, you know what I forgot to do is put up my restream thing. I mean, uh, my restream uh, log or chat thing. Sorry about that, guys. Let's see here. Get it rolling for you. All right. So that should be good to go. Um, but let's just say we got a Primaris Marine here, right? And then we got one of these dudes. So again, based on, you know, current day technology and stuff, might help if I was able to really bring them into focus. And then this plastic is really shiny right now versus the Games Workshop plastic. But, you know, again, for the time, it wasn't that bad. So, wasn't that bad at all. And I still kind of dig them. The only issue is the, uh, like I said, the, hold on a second, I'm about to drop this thing. Is, um, if you look right here, you can see that ball joint right there and how that connects to the arm. And then the same thing is in here. And then, you know, that's really about all there is to it. Now this guy... I'm trying to remember why I brought his arm up like that. Oh, actually, it's not even really... It must not have glued. Hmm. Or maybe it was too much tension when it dried or something. It popped loose. I'm going to go ahead and bring that hand down. Yeah, like that. So, anyway, that's about the only issue. And I hearken that back to, like, if you remember the old 3rd edition Dark Eldar and stuff like that. They, um... They were a little bit of a pain. The only difference is everything was done at the shoulder level and at the hand, not mid elbow. So, you know, mid elbow is a little bit of a pain. So, I mean, in honest, in honesty, some of the 3D prints that are out there, kind of, this kind of reminds me of those. So, I don't think that it's bad at all. And I mean, once you get it all painted up and stuff, I mean, a lot of the uh, what am I trying to say? Lack thereof of technology or something like that is probably going to go away. I mean, you're really not even going to notice it. And of course, there's always our tried and true techniques of filling in gaps that we don't like and covering things up or whatever. Um, but these are just, you know, I hate to say it this way, but they're cannon fodder. So, it's not like we've got to worry too much about, you know, serious perfection or anything. This is really a really a have fun army in regards to uh, what you call it, um, you know, just rolling some dice, almost like playing war with cards. Yeah, that's a lot of. I don't know, something happened there that there's a lot of pressure. Let me see if I can bend this a little bit to take some off. Yeah, it looks better right there. I may may have to use some zip kicker on this guy. I, you know, in a way it really doesn't matter, but it's my OCD that's kicking in and I see this. So. Something else I was going to do. I forgot what it was while I'm waiting on this little bit to secure itself.
There we go. Cool. So anyway, we've got 10 here that we're going to be finishing putting together. This was a guy that ran, I don't know, we lost some parts. As you can see, he's got an Auspex on him and stuff. I'll need to rip that off if I can because uh, I was doing all kinds of stuff to try to make them blend in 40k wise. Um, but I lost some arms for that guy, so basically he's he's a no-go casualty of war. And uh, he just won't be used unless I make my own or something like that or I find something. And that's one thing with these models, they don't really come with any extra parts. So if you lose something, that's, that's going to be an issue. So that being said, I'll go ahead and put these guys together and we will move on to... I'm pretty much going to have to do 10 at a time, looks like. And the slowest part is, of course, the cleanup. I mean, it's not a bad model, in my opinion. And whatever this plastic is that they used, it's definitely better, as I learned the hard way, not to paint them first. Like, paint them on the sprue, because... It was just an absolute pain to get them put together. Um, of course, that primer was sitting on there for 20 years or more. Well, yeah, definitely more than 20 years, what am I saying? So. But I'm actually, I'm actually excited about these guys. I mean, you know, they can be whatever guard regimen I want them to be. They could be proxy Krieg, even though I have a ginormous Krieg army. Uh, it just doesn't really matter. Oh, and that's something else. So, the Krieg army, okay, or Krieg, not Krieg army, the kill team starter set that has the Krieg, plastic Krieg guys, and um, I call, I keep trying to call them Krieg Marines, but um, the plastic Krieg and the, and the Orc commandos in there, the Krieg, I was concerned about how much larger those Krieg models would be from the Forge World ones that I have. I'm happy to say that while yes they are technically larger, there's you would have to in a lot of ways really be looking for the difference I think before you know it'd be something you'd be concerned with. You know say versus Primaris and Firstborn. Um, so that's that's a good thing. As you guys can see, this this goes together quite fast. It's just it's the cleanup that's the issue, um, and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. And something I said last night because this has been commented on in previous streams and videos, I you guys probably noticed when I did my space marine, you know, my various space marine armies that I put together, um, that I would you know shift the head around like uh, you know looking different ways, and, and the way you know I just kind of did it. I don't want to say exactly random, but if I had five out here, it'd be like left, center, right, left, center kind of thing. Um, unless there was something really, you know, blatantly going on with the posture, or it was a mono pose model that I couldn't do anything about. Um, you know, kind of like this dude right here. I mean, he's obviously, you know, aiming his gun that way, so having him looking this way would look kind of dumb. And that is a sergeant for this group. Or squad leader, whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually really happy that I, uh, that I'm working on these guys now. They've been, like I said, those boxes have been sitting around for well over 20 years. And, um, uh, it's amazing I kept them that long, I guess. Here, I want to just guest star in and say nothing. No, he's right. My box of shame is... I don't know if you guys heard him because I have my volume down a little bit. My box of shame is a 50... What'd you say again? A 53-foot car in Yeah, really. <laughs> it's definitely the meme of that truck we just saw on, uh, yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> But uh was hoping to work on these today, but it was my little man's birthday, so and I and, and I had shooters. Well I mean his birthday's on the twenty eighth, but 
We did his party today. Not a lot of people, of course, just a couple of family members and then one friend that came over that he doesn't care about. So, <laughs> you know, at four years old. It's your boy. Yeah, <laughs> it's your boy. <laughs> pretty much. Sigma male from hell. You can, they can see it now. That's why I got to freaking live till I'm like 100 to guide that fucker. <laughs> sure, your son is very antisocial and frankly just told one of the other kids to go... Looking himself for the cactus. Yeah. That's my boy. Yep. Well, I mean, you know, sir, I mean, looking at you, I'd probably tell you the same thing. <laughs> I mean, look at look at you. You're crying right now about somebody, you know, being independent. I realize that you've lived your life in a social bubble. You're not able to function on your own. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. We have a name for men like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had, had shooters today too, which was good. That's good. Yeah, I think this one guy, I didn't ask him, and this will probably get me some hate on here, but I think he's Russian, but lived in Australia for a while, because he had two different, you know, two different dialects going on. Right. And uh, I picked up on both of them, and uh, he's a pretty cool dude. And, uh, you know, oh God, he's Russian. Shut up. Get off my channel then. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was, I don't know, showing them how to shoot and stuff like that. And they didn't really know what they were doing. I mean, he, he knew, he actually was very knowledgeable. Um, he just wasn't a shooter. So I assume that he was not in the military or anything like that. And, it's a Russian um, mafia. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, just some skills. <laughs> well, so the lady that was there asked... Well, he made the comment that, which I agree with, you're not always going to be able to present your pistol out, for instance, to engage a target, like, you know, when you go to any static range and shoot at targets. And she's like, well, I mean, what, what situation could that possibly be? And he looked at me, and I just, I said, okay. And I said, well, come on over here. And I took him over to the shoot house, just this one room that I typically, you know, work on people with. And... I said, okay, I'm going to shoot my pistol. Everybody else is unloaded, good to go. You know, that way I'm the only one loaded and I'm not going to get shot in the back. You know, that kind of thing. Because um, I trust no one. And uh, he, I got, you know, face to face with the uh, self-healing rubber dummy that we have, in, you know, in each, well, not every room, but I've got quite a few of them. And um, I'm so close. She, are, she made the comment, she was like, you can't even move. I said, oh, I can move. I said, this, you know, I said, but if you ended up even this close, you have to be able to defend yourself right out of the holster. And so I said, I'm going to shoot. So that way nobody got surprised. And, um, you know, I said, is everybody ready? And like, yeah, I drew, drew for my holster, pelvis shot. And then as I slid back two more shots in the chest, her first comment was, I never saw you aim. I said, it's because I didn't. And she's like, how do you hit, you know, and, and I mean, they were perfect shots, if I do say so myself. And she was like, well, how do you do that? I said, practice. It's practice and muscle memory. That's all it is. Anybody can do this. You don't have to, you know, be a special operator. You don't have to, you know, if you just put the time in or the work, you you will be able to do these things. You know, and I told her, I said, five minutes a day in your bathroom, whatever, you know, just, just lock yourself down for five minutes a day and practice, you know, with an empty gun. I'm telling you, you'll be able to do these things. And, uh, yeah, it was, it went really well. And then they tell me, at the end of it all, they've been reading about my situation in the papers. Oh, shit. And I was like, really? I was like, and you still came out here? Oh, yeah, we're on your side. That's BS. I'm like, well, that's good. So I've got the Russian mafia on my side. <laughs> Not the worst thing to have. No, right? <laughs> FBI's listening right now. What? What did he just say? <laughs> We got him! We got him! FBI, open up! <laughs> oh, man. What's what's all this you got on your desk? Plastic crack. He's doing crack! That's all they're going to hear. That's the crack. Yep. This is definitely the crack. Damn, I didn't even realize I just literally assembled all those guys that quick, or finished assembling them that quick. I'm already... Wow. Cool.
Maybe this will go faster than I... Who am I kidding? <laughs> 400 models and I've only done... What do we do? Four. One, two, three, four, sixteen out of this one box of eighty. You should start your own games workshop store. Oh man, dude, I actually thought about that back in the day. Dude, I've been trying to reproduce models uh, and make my own stuff since I got into this because of their costs. And that was back when the a box of ten space marines was twenty dollars. Now what are they sixty or some some nonsense? And uh and now that I know how to do all this stuff, of course technology is different, you know, but, you know, I know how to make all these molds and everything else. I mean, it's not a, I mean, what I make? Uh, yeah, I made 40 extra uh, Death Corps Krieg, you know, Death Riders for myself. Because I think it cost, I think each one was like $23 or something like that. Each rider. It's freaking, and that, and that was back in 2000. 13 when I bought them I think so yeah man I mean I, I can't even imagine what they are now if they're even selling them I think Dan looked on or maybe it was you I can't remember looked on the games workshop website and they didn't really have anything for Forge World and Forge World was basically no more yeah and I think they've been pretty much completely absorbed by GW so well maybe that'll maybe that'll end up giving us plastic titans that would be cool I wouldn't mind having that. I, I hate working with resin. I absolutely hate it. And you gotta watch out too, man, because you breathe that shit in, dude. You're, you mess yourself up. Okay, so for those of us like me that aren't into the modeling side of it, what's the difference? Plastic. I mean, is it resin plastic and plastic resin? Or? Oh, no, it's, it's straight up resin. So the biggest hazard you have is breathing in fine particulates. So if you need to sand or even doing what I'm doing right here, you know, cutting this stuff off or trimming it down, you should be wearing a mask. You also need to wash everything. And technically you should do that with your plastic models sometimes, uh, depending on the company. If it's not a company I really know, you know, I would, like before I paint some of these, I'm probably going to stick them in water and just see what happens to the water. I mean, now these have been sitting around for 20 years, so there's probably... There's probably no real release agent on these anymore, but you know it's not something that I trust, and that's the kind of stuff that'll make your paint run weird or not stick and things like that. Um, but the resin, that's a whole other whole other issue. Um, again, the fine particulates, which I cannot stress enough. Um, of course, I will be honest and say that I have done shit without a mask on because it irritates the shit out of me, and it was a long project. But that's the risk I was willing to take. And I was ventilated at least, so I looked at it that way. Besides all the shit we've already bre you know breathed, I mean yeah, at this point it doesn't really you know. probably. Um, and then, like I said, you gotta wash them because all all the stuff. When I say wash them, like you gotta put them, let them. Like my my Titan that I did, I let those pieces soak in soapy water in mason jars for I think a month just because I, I didn't have time to get to it. But it was so much better when I pulled them out because of, you know, you could feel how dry they were versus how they were before I put them in. Like there was, you just, you didn't feel an oil, but you felt something weird. And that's all I can, you know, and it's, it's the release agent. It's the chemicals themselves as they come to the top during the curing process. You know, there's all that kind of stuff that goes on. And um, especially depending on how, how long you've, or I'm sorry, how short of a time it was from its casting to when you purchased it. Now, again, that model also sat around for years on end. So I had a little bit of luck, I guess, with that too. But yeah, resin's not, you know, you, you don't mess with that. You definitely want to soak it, scrub it down, you know, and do your due diligence or you're going to waste a lot of money, really. And, I mean, did they specify the difference between the resin and the plastic models? Or? So Forge World is all resin, all of it. Um, I think they might have had some plastic bits or whatever, but I mean it's unmistakable, you know, what's resin and what's not. Now, as far as Games Workshop is concerned, it's Citadel Finecast, which, God, man, avoid that like the plague if you can. It, they're absolutely horrible. Um, it's really soft resin, really brittle. Um, 
I mean, just clipping them off like I'm doing right here, you could break a thing in half. It's just ridiculous. Um, and I'm not even sure why they made that shit. Uh, but, you know, again, you got to wash the shit and do all, you know, do all the things that you would do. It's really, in my opinion, if you're going to mess around with resin, it's really an adult thing. It's really not for kids. And you really need to be paying attention to what you're doing. So, GW doesn't really sell resin other than the Citadel fine cast stuff, which I think they've pretty much gotten away from. Uh, I think they might have some old stuff still laying around, but I think the word's pretty much gotten out, don't buy it, unless, of course, you're a new new uh, 40K hobbyist. Right. That'd be, it'd be me. I wouldn't know the difference. Right. You know? Well, and, it, and the worst part is they did it with the models that everybody wanted, you know, and... So why why bother? I mean, if with the, all the different types of plastic available out there, why go with resin? It was just like you know a technology change at the time. Oh, you mean now? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. I mean, honestly, I mean, hell, if you're gonna do anything resin, 3D, you know, 3D printed resin, it's it's hard like this plastic here. Uh, assuming it was cured correctly, I mean, obviously you could get stuff that you know will crack and. You know, under pressure, if you tweak it too much or whatever, I've done that with some of the stuff I've ordered from people, but that was my own fault, you know, not theirs. And um, it's just, yeah, I mean, I honestly wouldn't. Plastic, in my opinion, is the way to go. I ain't got to worry about fumes and everything else. That's another thing. I, I, and I know that they say, oh no, that's just a China recast. No, that's bullshit. I, I freaking, you know, uh, when I first started working on my Krieg Deathcore. My eyes were, were burning a little bit from, you know, the um, the resin, whatever was in, you know, the fumes as it's off-gassing or whatever, you know. And at, at first I didn't realize what was going on, but then I got a headache and my eyes were really burned. I was like, wait a minute. And, you know, went outside, whatever, everything calmed down. As soon as I got back to the model, it started again. I was like, it's the damn, it's these damn models. It's the resin. It's, it's off-gassing and it's freaking burning my eyes so you know and, and all that's supposed to be taken care of in the curing process with them but you know and then here's another another horrible piece to it the resin models are not all they do not always um what am i trying to say you can pretty much bet on any plastic model you get from games workshop for the most part everything's going to line up and be of the size it should be you cannot do that with the resin. Things shrink. Um, I mean, my God, there's plenty of videos out there from dudes that have, you know, I think, uh, and again, I'm not trying to steal from Squidmar, uh, but he did a thing a long time ago on a Thunderhawk that they had, and the amount of, I mean, it was an old one, and I think it was a metal one, actually. Um, but then he did, oh, no, the Tau ship, that's what I was thinking of. The Tau... Manta or whatever the hell that big ass ship is that they got. It's like the biggest model that there is. Right. It's even bigger than a warlord, I guess. Um, it. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, uh, you switched some around. Okay, appreciate it. Um. Anyway, it's all resin, and I guess things didn't fit together. You had to, you know, you had to fill in gaps constantly. Um, you also had to reheat the resin to, to bend things into place. That's another thing you have to worry about with resin. Um, I've had to do that with my Titans and stuff. Uh, the, the weapons, you know, they show up and whether it's the heat from, you know, being mailed to you or maybe it was how they sent it and I don't know, but, uh, you know, freaking barrels are bent and like the Eldar uh, fan, uh, Revenant Titan that I have, every one of those barrels were bent. You know, and, and so I had to you know, take care of all that. And it's not a hard process. It's just, you know, more it's time. It's just another step in, a, in an annoyance. It could be, yeah. I mean, I I look, I don't know. So, you you know me well enough. I'm not an elitist in this hobby. I don't give a shit about half the stuff that people complain about. Um, if I have a bitch, it's one that I've thought about for some time and actually have experience in. Um, I'm not, and even then I'm still a little reserved as far as really bitching about it because, you know, part of this hobby, in my opinion, 
is the struggle. It's, you know, when you're done doing all these things and the things you learn from doing it, you know, just like I did, you know, last night figuring out, you know, after all these years, how to best effectively put these idiots together. Um, you know, you, you look back on your models and there's a huge accomplishment, you know, even though you know, those outside the hobby would never see it, that's okay. Um, it's, you know, it's there. So that's no, we're just a couple of losers playing with little toy soldiers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, we don't know anything about warfare or anything. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. It, I, I look at, I look at all of it as a challenge. I mean, hell, the first Space Marine I ever painted, I wish I still had it. Man, I didn't know anything about acrylic paints. It was, all I had was enamel paints because that's what I knew when you paint a model, right? I was going to say, that's that, like testers modeling paints. That's exactly what I bought. Right. Why yeah, wouldn't you? You should have seen that Blood Angel. It was horrible. It, looked, <laughs> it was more Blood than Angel. Dude, it looked like, you know, I... And, and I must have spent probably six hours on that that model, and it looked like I let the the uh, paint congeal and then dump dunked him in there and just you know pulled him out and let him dry that way like it like a brush never even touched his ass. That's how bad it was. It was so I mean oh my god, like you know that one meme that's out there with the the ultramarine or whatever. Yeah, just kill me, brother. <laughs> Bro, that one had nothing on what mine looked like. It was horrible. And, you know, and I wish I still had that to this day because, you know, it, I mean, all of the, te the techniques, you know, that I've learned just by trial and error. And it's amazing to me that YouTube is out there. And, and I'm actually, I smile to myself, you know, when I see that people are using and they have names for this stuff that I discovered on my own but never just you know it was a technique that I never thought to myself okay well this is something we could do you know and I smiled at myself because I'm like you know it's funny to me that I thought of this years and years ago was doing these things and now people are doing it now and because they can make it public it's you know a big thing like the whole slap chop thing dude <laughs> dude I was doing that shit a long time ago and I know other people had too I think um, but you know, back when I first got in this hobby, as you know, there's there was no widespread internet, you know, sharing of anything. Right. And so, you know, it was just a bunch of people all over the world that had the same general ideas or figured it out on their own. I mean, I remember when I painted that Steel Legion. When I came in, everybody was looking. You know, when when I first did it, I spent all weekend painting the tanks and everything like that. And everybody in our gaming group. We had 40 people in that group. Man, I wish I would, in some ways I was still there, but some of those guys were morons. But uh, anyway, um, the first thing everybody looked at was the fact that there was this crazy diamond pattern in their mind, which it wasn't, um, and you'll get a kick out of this, all over the tanks, and it was multicolored even though it was white, black, and gray. You know, but it was, you know, it just looked like, it, you know, things blended in, so forth and so on for camouflage. And they're like, how in the world did you do this? I said, you really want to know? And they're like, yeah. I said, cool. I'd be happy to teach you. Go back to your barracks room, get your laundry bag, and drape it over your models and then paint. Just spray over the laundry bag. And they're, and they're like, what? Where did you learn that? I'm like, this is how I paint my sniper rifle. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense then. Yep. And, uh, you know, and when you do it like that, it gives, you know, when you're up close really looking at it, yeah, you can see the, the, you know, the squares or diamonds or whatever, but from far away, it really fools the eyes. So now I laugh when I think about the way the Army and the Marine Corps and the Navy and everybody else came out with the Digi Camo. That was 10 years after we were doing this stuff with our sniper rifles. You know, to toy with, you know, toy with uh, whoever's observing you, their eyes. So they're looking at it, but their eye can't focus. And they're like, wait, is there something there? No, no, can't be, you know, and I mean, and that's exactly what it was all about. You know, we didn't do the typical woodland camo thing. We did the, the cami netting thing. I'm sorry, the laundry bag netting thing. So for, for those wondering or listening, camouflage purpose is not to necessarily blend in with the background. 
Not always. It's to no. break the pattern. Yep. Because your your eye is looking. You look for a tank. You're looking for a tank shaped device. Yep. But it can be sitting out there looking like something else altogether. And some people really go overboard with it, but. Well, and camouflage can take many different forms. We just, right. we just the way society is these days, and of course the stuff that we have, um, it uh, we're, we're our minds have limited ourselves to a paint pattern. But if you look at history, for instance, and we actually did this in my old sniper platoon back in uh, what was this ninety seven ninety six, it was an op, you know, against our own battalion, and. Um, Basically, what happened was they were looking for us, the whole of the battalion, 1,500 Marines, right? We took PVC pipe and sheets and painted Humvees on those sheets, like uh, like the, the you know each side of a Humvee on the sheet, and then right. draped it over the PVC pipe. So at range, they thought for sure we got them, and they did their entire you know maneuver on it. And then when, you know, the, their instructors were called and told, uh, you've just been wiped out by indirect fire assets, what are you talking about? Well, they're not even there. They're actually behind you. You know, I mean, they were, oh man, the battalion commander, he was so pissed. But, um, you know, Napoleon did that. That's where we got the idea from, you know? Right. So, uh, Patton's 20th Army Group. Yep, yep. World War II, blow up tanks and, f and wooden bullshit vehicles fake everything fake airplanes yeah well look at uh well i mean and then look at you know world war one with the german sniper well the, the the german snipers or we'll say marksmen I'm, i don't know if we could necessarily call them snipers at the time but you know one of the biggest things that they had the germans had was the facial and helmet armor it was literally impossible or almost impossible rather for a normal troop to be able to, to get a headshot. So they could easily sit, you know, in their trenches. Yeah, I'm sure it rung their bells and stuff, but you couldn't kill them. So, you know, allied snipers, you know, went out and, you know, horse carcasses that were on the ground. I mean, you know, people want to laugh, and I don't know if George Lucas got it from this, but, you know, they cut into horse carcasses and used the horses you know, as their ghillie suit or their hide by crawling into them and then shooting out of their mouths and things like that. And um, and they were able to sneak up, you know, uh, on the Germans, and then they were able to take these well-aimed shots and put it right in the, in the eye, you know, um, whatever, the eye opening of those helmets. And then, you know, at that point, because they were so effective, the Germans were like, well, then what's the point of us wearing these damn things? Right. You know, so they basically just got rid of them for the most part. Or they just didn't use them as much, I mean to say. They didn't get rid of them, but you know what I mean. So. Well, yeah, and I mean, um, what was that guy? I can't remember the name of him. I think they called him Gentleman Johnny. He was a Confederate officer in the American Civil War. Mm -hmm. And he had come from a theater background. Back then, a theater background was not something that was much admired. Right. What he brought with him was an understanding of how to make things look like something else. Right. So they, they cut down logs, painted them black. So every time the Union would start marching on the area, suddenly they'd see these black barrels sticking out of bushes. Yep. And they would slow to a crawl, and it was called the masked batteries. And uh, it, it slowed the Union marches to a crawl. The other thing he did was he would use noise and light to mm -hmm. simulate units that weren't there. Right. Mar march 200 guys in a circle, go down into a dip, come back out the other side, march around again. And they thought there was literally entire regiments on the move. Oh, yeah. 200, 200 guys. Oh, yeah. So. Well, and I mean, it's it's an, it's an a, a very, very early, I'm sure there was stuff before, you know, a recorded history as far as we really know. Um, it was a very, very early method of force multiplying oh, yeah. you know you know in, in lieu of having the forces that you need or economy of force it really was and I, I remember having these conversations with CEOs and stuff and they would just look at me like I you know they couldn't believe that an enlisted guy knew this stuff and, I, <laughs> and I'm looking at them knowing that they don't even know because I know they didn't read this stuff they didn't 
you know, they, they the only history they did was what little bit they might have paid attention to in high school and in college, and then whatever they learn, you know, at the warfighting, well, not the warfighting college, but OCS and TBS, you know, and that's about it. Hell, the warfighting college doesn't even talk about that stuff, you know. I mean, I took, uh, let's see, I was a sergeant when I took, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it's an MCI course, warfighting MCI course from the warfighting college. My, um, my platoon commander for my sniper platoon, what he did was he had me, you know, I guess he had extra books or something or whatever, or no, I'm sorry, he had just finished, that's what it was. And he was like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, your take as a sergeant on all of this. And I'm never going to forget this scenario as long as I live, because man, it cost me so much grief initially um, with whoever the, this colonel was I was talking with in Quantico. I mean, I didn't know the guy or anything. But he was really upset. First, he was upset that they at my unit because, which makes no sense, that they let a sergeant, you know, do it and submit it. You know, I mean, you're really not even supposed to do that until you're a gunnery sergeant. But that's beside the point. You know, I mean, what do you care if a you know a junior NCO is trying to better himself, right? Well, this scenario, and I'm sure you'll be able to picture this in your head. In this scenario, you had, and this, this is key. You had every asset that a Marine Expeditionary Special Operations Cable Unit could have. Every air asset, every naval, you know, naval ship asset, every freaking artillery asset. There's nothing you would go wanting for, okay? And the enemy apparently was making a push where they, you know, you had a choice to blow this bridge or whatever to, to delay their... Now, apparently they had the ability to rebuild the bridge and all this kind of stuff. That um, you had, you know, uh, to make the choice of how you were going to delay and deny them the ability to access that bridge. Were you going to blow the bridge yourself? And what assets were you going to use? They never factored in a Marine sniper's thoughts. They never factored in a long-range reconnaissance patrol or intelligence gathering assets thoughts on it. They don't, This scenario was basically down to conventional operations tanks etc that's it that's all this thing was about you know and having a fact you know forward air controller or whatever to be able to um you know call in air so forth and so on that's that's how i mean that's the whole reason we have things or had things like the sniper employment officer course or you know a sark commander's course and stuff like that so you learned how to use reconnaissance assets etc because they just don't know and you know in Unfortunately, you've got plenty of officers out there that just don't want to listen to anybody enlisted. Well, anyway, the the bridge and the operate, operational area to include um, your FIBA or forward edge of the battle area, for those of you that don't know, um, laid in between two giant ridge lines, according to the map, that were somewhere in a ballpark of about, I don't know, a thousand feet high. Um, for those of you that you know are not familiar with this kind of stuff, it's very tall and steep, but not for a unit. You know, I mean, it, it would take you know some time to get up there, but not that much time. So it's not unreasonable to say that you couldn't get a unit up there to observe, or even halfway up, which is basically what I did because you wouldn't want to be on top. That way, the ridge line itself masked you know where you were, um, especially if you know they started figuring out sniper fire and things of that nature. Well, what I did was, I, you know, we had the snipers or whatever in there, and again, they said you had all these assets. The contention be behind what I did was I never used any ground forces. No tanks. Uh, well, I take that back. I used engineers uh, because they said that there were, there was a minefield or something like that. So I had engineers come in to confirm and deny the existence of the minefield. Um, after we, you know, did a little bit of area reconnaissance ourselves and then, you know, with the time we had allotted, you know, putting the snipers up on either side of the, we'll call it a valley. Um, and then, uh, and then I had them reinforce that minefield just around the bridge itself. Um, apparently the, the river or whatever it was, the bridge was over, was way too deep to ford. Like that wasn't an issue. So the bridge was the main choke point. Um, but I never brought in tanks. I never brought in any, you know, infantry. I only used artillery. Um, excuse me, artillery, uh, 
naval gunfire and aircraft. And according to the scenario, as I did it, I win. Um, when that was sent up, we literally got a call, you know, from the Warfighting College about who sent this up, who allowed a sergeant to do it, blah, blah, blah. And they wanted to talk to me about it. And the colonel was like, you know, and he said this. I couldn't believe it. He's like, this is, this is why we send officers and train them so hard so that, you know, they understand the full scope of what, you know, the Marine Corps can do. And I said, I understand what the scope is. He goes, well, you didn't use, you know, hardly anything. I said, I didn't need to. And he goes, how do you figure? And I said, well, the question actually would be, why do you think that we needed to use troops and tanks, you know, when they weren't necessary? Well, why do you think they don't? I'm like, because lives didn't need to be wasted for something that could be taken care of by superior, you know, uh, firepower from indirect fire assets and air superiority. The phone got real quiet. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of common sense. So you would have thought. Old, you would have thought. It was the old joke that uh, if ground commanders had their way, they would advance under a, a constant barrage of artillery. Yeah, if the if the <laughs> yeah if the ammo if could, yeah, yeah if it yeah if it could be supplied, sure. I mean, well, and that's the thing, you know, like what happened was he said, "Let me speak to your you know your lieutenant." Um, and so I put Lieutenant Perry back on the phone. But he kept it on speaker so I could hear. He just kind of told me, you know, with his finger, you know, don't say nothing. And uh, he goes, you know, Lieutenant Perry, admire, you know, trying to better your Marines and stuff. But, I mean, honestly. We don't want them thinking. Well, he didn't, he didn't say that, but he was like, yeah, you know. That's what he meant. Yeah, probably. He was like, you know, honestly, I mean, this is, you know, this is why you're in the position you're in. And, and he stuck up for him. He goes, well. You know, Sergeant Geis at the time, he's like, Sergeant Geis is, you know, the best team leader we have. And he's like, is that saying a lot? And he goes, absolutely. And he's like, okay. And uh, he's like, so this is why you did it? You let him do this? And he goes, yes, sir. He had no idea. I just called him in the office one day and said, do this. And this is what he came up with. Well, how long did it take him? How many days? He goes, 20 minutes. He said, what? And he goes, yes, sir. He's like, 20 minutes. And he was done. Went back to his team went out in the field and then you called me and I called him out of the field to deal with this phone call. <laughs> he was like, he's like, okay, well, clearly we need to look at, you know, what these guys are being trained because I've, some of this stuff, I, I would have never thought of it. I mean, sniper teams, come on. And he goes, well, that's what he does, you know? And he's also uh -huh. a force reconnaissance Marine. You know, I mean, this is what they do. I mean, they are a force multiplier. I mean, and he said, and if, you know, respectfully, sir, I mean, I'm, you know, kind of paraphrasing here because this is so long ago. He was like, you know, basically telling this colonel that, um, you know, you need to understand that, you know, when they go out for us, and I think this was his way of telling the colonel, you've obviously never done anything. And I don't think the guy ever had either. Um, and now, you know, Perry, Lieutenant Perry at the time, now he's a retired lieutenant colonel. I think he works for the CIA. But, um, you know, he said, you know, when they go out, you know, specifically Sergeant Geis' team, they go out with the, you know, whatever battlefield commander's plan that they're supporting, sure. But they go out there and confirm or deny whether or not that plan is going to, you know, work. And then they brief the mute commander, you know, through the intel, you know, or the skiff. Um, and, uh, you know, and if they decide that the plan needs to change, then it changes. If it has to be changed on the fly on the ground, they brief the commander once he arrives in the objective rally point, and it changes. That's their job. Well, I mean, you know, we got enlisted men. Are you telling me we got enlisted men telling officers what to do in the field? And he goes, yes, we do. Yeah, duh. Well, after I went to SOTG to become an instructor, that kind of stuff, when I got back to the fleet, uh, it seemed like everything had changed. No more did staff and COs write, you know, training plans and all this other stuff. I mean, it was, I didn't even know what Marine Corps I stepped back into. So... Which is probably why where we're at today. Like, look at that video I showed you. Oh, yeah. Dude, absolutely. I mean, I can't imagine any one of us, you, me, Dan, or anybody else, ever. I mean, they, they'd have relieved us on the spot. Because we'd be like, dude, what are you, what, we're, not, we're not letting these fools in here. Are you stupid? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this is our orders. Uh, no, literally, this is a, an illegal, you know, order. Um, 
I mean, literally illegal. And you're not allowed to obey this, and I'm not going to obey it. I, I would have anyway. I know you would have. And it's just like, dude, this is crazy. You know, I mean, it's right there in our face. Letting them climb over the concertina wire? Dude, I, in, in our just, day, we would have been butt-stroking them right back across. Yeah. I, I just... You know, I think that's probably why units that I've been in no longer exist. Like the old oh, yeah. rubber, rubber calf. Um... It was pound for pound the most powerful fighting unit in the U.S. Army's arsenal. Yeah. Artillery, mortars, helicopters, tanks, Bradleys, missiles, fucking fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft on call. Yep. And as they said, when you're out there, you're the boss. I don't care if General Muck and Futch has $75. What you say is what's going on. Well, you're the yeah, and you're the one that's that's looking at the enemy, not dipshit back, freaking you know, yeah. however many miles away. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, but well, more than once we'd be out uh, both once in training and also in uh, reality. And you hear this lieutenant trying to spit out a contact report. Put your goddamn sergeant on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> about, 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 that would never happen. That would never happen. No, it, those days are over, and, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, man, I'm, I saw that today, and I, I mean, I saw the other one, you know, where they raised up the, the Constantino wire with the forklift and stuff, and, you know, and I'm just like, dude, what the heck, where they unlock the gate, you know, I, I just, you know, and, and this, the fact that you have commanders that are willing to make this happen and you got troops that are willing to follow those illegal orders. Okay, the court said we can't cut the wire. Okay, well, we're not cutting the wire. We're letting them climb, o letting them climb over. You know, all you're trying to do is circumvent the court system, something that you and I would go to prison for. You know, right. I, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know where we are anymore. And I think this is all, a, you know, a devised or devisable plan I don't care how many women and children we might see, you know, that the media decides to, you know, fool the public with. It's about, dude, even if 10 a day, you know, 10 sleeper cell terrorists a day got in, got inside the wire, that's all you need. I mean, hell, the Viet Cong proved that, and they did it with one at a time. You know, sappers. Yep. And it just, I don't know, man, we're, we're just stupid. I mean, I, I honestly... I mean, I hate it for these guys. They should be arrested for aiding and abetting the enemy. I mean, nobody's going to have the balls to do it, but... And hell, the way we treated, you know... I say treated. The way that we dealt with, you know, uh, POWs and, you know, even humanitarian missions and things like that. You know, all those supposed refugees, like Cuba with Joint Task Force 160 and all that stuff. Dude, we didn't... Dude, there was no... There was no, oh, yeah, it'll be okay. No, dude, we were harsh as hell. Because that's, yeah. that's how we weeded out the criminals and the bad element, you know? Because they're like, well, hey, oh, wait a minute, hey, we're not going to get away with this shit. Have you been watching what's going on over in Ireland? Yes. Oh, my God. I don't like that guy. Uh, I'm going to probably say it wrong. I think it's Conor McGregor. Yeah, I, yeah, same, but he, he's yeah. not wrong. This no, no, yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's spot on, dude. Hell, dude, if it were me... Especially with everything that they that they did back in the day with the IRA and everything else, and you know FBI's going, oh my God, you're a terrorist, dude. They need to be taken back. All these countries need to be taken back their country. This is out of control. Well, I mean Sinn Fein, which for those that don't know is the political arm of the old Irish Republican Army, mm -hmm. it's going, oh, you know, well, let's just put, drape everything in a rainbow flag. It'll be fine. Yep. They have they have clearly lost their heritage. You know, I mean, you got, what's that freaking dude's name that's in the parliament there talking about how everything's too white, you know? And it's like... That's uh, their prime minister. Yeah, I'm like, dude... That's their HNIC, man. This dude is literally running the country, and he's saying there's too many white people in Ireland. I'm like, have yeah. you met Ireland? Yeah, it's like 94 or 95% Caucasian, something like that. I mean... I don't know. It's just ridiculous, dude. I mean, and it, you know, they know nobody's going to do anything about it, has the money to do anything about it. And I think in a lot of ways they are hoping that people will rise up 
and start this utter anarchy worldwide because then it gets their you know depopulation nonsense going it gets you know a lot you know the ability to to sit there and go see this is why we need a one world government we can all unite pool our resources you know so on and so on and i'm telling you it, it this is all i mean they've got all the time in the world we don't you know to a point and eventually it'll get to i mean look at what happened with covid dude you know, just and then over like toilet paper shortages and things like that. Oh yeah, people lost their shit, man. Yeah, turning in their own family and neighbors. Yep. And we weren't even at war, war. You know, they weren't even. You know, there was no CCP or anybody else here that they could be a brown shirt for. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, they're brown shirting for their own government. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, whatever it took to make sure they had food on the table, and that's it. That's why, you know, all this talk of, oh, I'm a patriot, blah, blah, blah. Okay, dude, you know, I mean, maybe you think you are, but until your convictions are truly tried, uh, I'm not really buying it. And, you know, and I've been there, you know. Right. I know what it means to possibly lose your career because of what's, you know, the right thing to do. And I still did the right thing because I got to live with myself. You know, I got just just like the crap I'm going through right now. I'm not going to ever be in a position, never, to tell my kids don't quit on something and have in the back of my mind that I quit when I needed to be as convicted and as strong as I need to be. Not going to do it. You know, I mean, I just, I'm not. I, I, I can't. And I'm sure, you know, people, I mean, hell, I've had people here say, is it really worth, you know, the money, you know, blah, blah, blah. Dude, principal, is that a word that, that you either didn't know, forgot, or, you know, was never a part of your vocabulary? Well, I, I think the biggest thing on that, that is is that people that stand on the on principle aren't backed up anymore. Oh, no, absolutely but not. That's, that's, that's what has people scared. You know, you can get people to stand on principle if they turn around and see somebody behind them. Right. But if there's nobody there or if the people behind them are running away... Oh yeah, we both know that watching a, an army break is it just takes that one guy. Yep. Well, look at the Republican Party. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ex the an exact example, and that's not even war. Freaking turn on each other left and right, and I'm not saying that they should agree, you know, with each other completely or anything like that. I mean, hell, if that's the case, we might as well not even have, you know, the government, you know, a republic or anything like that. It'd be a one-party system like the Bath Party or something, you know? <laughs> it's kind of what we have now anyway. I know. I'm, <laughs> the Uniparty. I try to ignore it. <laughs> Uniparty. They're, uh, they're Uni-something. Freaking. It's probably got something to do with their nomenclature or whatever you guys called that shit on the My Little Ponies. <laughs> I can't. The, the cutie. Oh, man, people were still running with that. What is it right? called? Cutie what? Cutie marks. Yeah. Oh, cutie marks. And you wait, you wait, man. You got a daughter. You wait. Boy, she's she's, she's gonna latch on to something like that, and you're gonna be sitting there going, "Man, I, I laughed to see that." She's gonna man. she's gonna tell me that I don't know. I don't even. I'm trying to think. I thought I saw somebody named a My Little Pony. It was like Rainbow something. Rainbow Dash. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. And. uh... She's going to be like, Rainbow Dash would have killed Horus. <laughs> yeah, she's probably going to get a little mixed up. And I'm going to go, there. I'm going to go, Horus who? <laughs> <laughs> Horus Heresy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and for anybody listening, no, I am not a brony. I have a granddaughter. And she went through her and my little pony phase. And What's a brony? A, a brony is a grown-ass man who follows my little pony and, like, gets all excited about the shows. I have another name for people like really? that. Oh, dude. That's weird. I, I took her to the movie. It was a My Little Pony full-length movie, and I'm like, okay, I love this little girl. I'll take her to the movie. We go walking up. The entire line was grown-ass neckbeards waiting in line to see a My Little Pony movie. Bro, I'd have turned around and left. And I looked at her. I said, honey, the movie's for What do you want to go see? And she's like, I said, no. Any other movie? What do you want to go see? That was some other shit she wanted to see too. That's good. I'm like, Come on, let's go, hun. Let's go. We got a, 20 minutes to kill. You want a soda? Yeah. I was not about to take that girl in there. With a room 20, full of pedophiles. 
Yeah, yeah, roof Filipinos. Jesus. Like, I could probably hold off five or six at a time, but... But no. yeah, just, I mean, go, go, just look up Brony. You know, you're no, gonna be, you're I, gonna throw up, man. No, I, I don't, I don't want to look up Brony. I don't even want to. <laughs> that, that, it's probably like some kind of FBI, you know, flagging list or something. Oh, they probably like them. Like oh, man. You well, know, they like them, because, but, um, yeah, now, now it's Hello Kitty, or I don't even know yet. I gotta get her Christmas think, wish list. I think my wife got her daughter something with Hello Kitty. I thought I saw that, but I don't oh, know much about that's it. Where, that, that Hello Kitty is 40K for young girls. Did you get Danielle something Hello Kitty? No, Monica bought Danielle. Oh, her sister did. Okay. Um, that's like 40K for girls like under about 13. I don't really know what it is. Yeah, that Crystal, she doesn't know what it is either. Well, he says it's like 40k for little girls. Maybe it's the, like I don't know, crazy cat person. Yeah, it's it, it's basically it's figures, it, it's movies, it's stickers, it's toys, it's stuffed animals. It's a money. There's sink. a two. Yeah, there's a two hundred and fifty dollar makeup mirror for young girls that's Hello Kitty. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Again, it's it's. Yeah. And, and yet... Tween my, girl, 40K. And <laughs> yet, my models will last longer. Yeah, because they'll forget about it. I'm, my, my, little, my little Katie is probably already forgotten. You know, it'll be something else now. So, but uh, That's crazy. Last year, man, I, we got her nothing but, and she just was ecstatic. Hmm. So. Uh, hold on a second, I'll be right back. Will do that before me. No, he tends with to just try to lick me or make me rub his belly. Yeah. Had to deal with uh, the dog thing. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, no, I ain't looking up no brony stuff. That that sounds like a trap. Dude, it's just. I was disgusted. I was literally disgusted. I'm like, Dude, I, I'm telling you, I'd have been like, we're going home. Or we're gonna find something else to do. Yeah, we did, and, and I don't, I don't remember what was on at the same time, but it was like some other kid's thing, and she was like, "Okay, are you sure?" I said, "It's full, honey. You see all the people standing there? Yeah, they're waiting to get into the next one. Oh, they're waiting to get in, all right." <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're all looking, and they're like waving at her. I'm like, "No, I'm not. I mean, they're literally like wearing t-shirts and." Uh, And fucking uh, t-shirts and like little ears and stuff like that. It's like, oh my god, grown ass men. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, well, you, wait, you wave at my daughter like that, there's gonna I'm be a, a cut, problem. I'm gonna cut you. <laughs> yep, something 
dude, you're gonna, you better hope that you only ordered a small popcorn because that shit's going all in you. <laughs> Box it all. Forcefully. I'm gonna get banned off of freaking YouTube or Twitter for some kind of violence. I'm sure. It's probably gonna be a brony that watches. Oh, he, 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 I'm offended. He, he's a he, He's saying hate speech. I don't know, man. This this world's gone crazy, dude. Oh yeah. And this was fuck five six years ago. So that's probably worse. I'm sure now. it hasn't gotten. Yeah, I was gonna say it hasn't. I'm sure it hasn't gotten better. I don't know. I I had a good time going to the movies with my wife. Being with her, I didn't enjoy the movies. The movies were stupid. Um, the two movies we saw, I can't. Let me think. No, I'm. Well, the first one we saw was that creator one. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. It was great, except for the obvious. You know, all the white people are villains, and you know, except for the one one lone wokester, if you will. And uh, I mean, it didn't. They didn't have to go that route. And of course, you know, the U.S. Army is the villain. Yeah, well, I mean, it was basically the same like Avatar with the extremely large vehicles, uh, you know, army vehicles and stuff. And but I mean, like, you know, I didn't care. I mean, I, and I wouldn't care. You know, the the uh, main protagonist was, you know, a black dude. He played a great job or did a great job with his role. The little Asian kid. I don't know. I felt like there needed to be more with that, but you know, whatever. I mean, they, I'm not writing it. Um, I thought the ending was pretty cool, and but I mean it was it was blatantly in your. I mean the cinema uh, CGI wasn't bad, and like it wasn't you know like blatantly over the or uh, fake. Wasn't Marvel level of stupid. No, it, it looked good. Like it, it made sense. I mean, now I will say this. I mean I don't know. Have you seen this? No. Are you going to see it? I want to. Read I don't it know. I, I don't care about spoilers. So okay. Sure. So if you're if you're listening to this and you care about spoilers, I guess don't listen. <laughs> so, but uh, now they had this thing that was in the I forget what they called it. I mean, again, I I was paying attention as much as I could to the point that you know I was trying to ignore the the bullshit. And um, but it was this thing that the government, our government, had put together to go after AI and uh you know, AI robots or whatever, because I guess we had some kind of nuclear incident or something like that in L.A. due to the AI robots, and, you know, there's a big wall built around it and shit like that. Whatever this space platform is, basically, or suborbital platform, it, they have teams that go out, locate these, you know, these AI camps or whatever, and then it has, I mean, you can actually see it, it, it has this giant targeting array you know, like, think of it like, like you're scanning a UPC symbol or something, you know, and, you know, in the store, and right. it, it does that over the ground, but here's the thing, this thing is supposed to be so stinking massive, and the target array is supposed to be so massive that we'll just say it's like the equivalent of, I don't know, like 38 TACOMS missiles, you know, worth right. of, worth of AOE, um, but it, the, the facility is so massive, it doesn't make any sense how it's not, the target area is not that massive. It just didn't, you know, it doesn't add up. So, anyway, um, hold on a second. So that kind of bothered me every time they would use it. Uh, and then there, you know, this one area at the very end of the movie, or near the end of the movie, where they find, you know, the, we'll just say the, the shit they're looking for the whole movie. It's in this fucking gigantic ass golden temple thing that somehow this giant suborbital device that's been searching for AI for years that, Missed. yeah, that couldn't find this thing this whole time. I'm like, oh, dude, man. you gotta be shitting me. I mean, my God, dude, our fucking satellites we got right now could find that shit. They Go could practically read a license plate, come on. Yeah, really, Google Earth fucking probably would have found that shit. I was just like, dude, this is dumb. So, yeah, that part was dumb. 
but it is what it is. And then the other one we watched was Five Nights at Freddy's. Holy shit, was that dumb? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was. It's a dumb game. I can assume that, that it's going to be a dumb movie. Well, they no. I mean, they had the guy from. Uh, oh my god, what is his name? You remember the movie Hackers with uh, uh, Sandra Bullock? No, uh, a long time ago, or not Sandra Bullock? Um, oh my god, what's her name? Angelina Jolie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, remember freaking uh, what is his name in there? Crash? No, it wasn't Crash. That was the freaking protagonist guy, the, the long-haired weirdo that you know had the crazy, stupid surfer, you know, drawn-out talk and. You know, um, he was, yeah, and I can't think of. Yeah, I can't think of who he is here. Anyway, he is the antagonist in there. Ultimately, like he's the guy that you know put the the bodies or you know the kids into the stuff and you know everything like that. Like he's the dad and all that. You know, and I knew it. They did it way too fast in the beginning. With him being the social worker or whatever that or whatever unemployment guy, he's like, "Well, I got this job," and I'm like, immediately. And now I I never played the game, um, same. And so I didn't know really much about it. But as soon as I saw his face and the way he did, I was like, "This guy's a bad guy." I, I mean, we're talking what 20 minutes in maybe, and something else happened in there. This will this will give you some. Uh, what am I trying to say? This will give you some um, encouragement, and I'm saying that sarcastically. There were VMI cadets in there, right? In their oh, uniform geez. and shit. My wife getting scared about something is one thing. These guys getting scared, we got problems. Oh yeah. And it, and it, and all you know what they got scared over? Not not a creepy you know robot creature or whatever. A phone ringing shit you not they jumped my wife jumped i'm like dude you people are fucking retarded <laughs> I'm telling oh you. man just absolutely yeah. crazy absolutely crazy yeah it's uh well that's the world we're in now oh my buddy tyler's sending me some shit fin to play 40k you available wife and i are in here killing heretics uh, How are they playing 40k? Well, no, or? no, he means Dark Tide. He's got oh, he's okay. gotten into it now. Um, I guess I could. Well, shit, I got models everywhere. See, so I guess I could do it, but um, I, don't know. I got I don't know. I think I got too much going on here to do that because I'd have to move all these parts and hope. That Scotty and Daniel don't get to them. <laughs> that's okay. the other issue. Is that that's what I'm in right now? I'm just yeah, I know. I could I could shot, hear the fran frantic clicking, <laughs> the, the clicking and the the distant sounds of heretic moans and groans in my head anyway. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh my god, these dogs are pissing me off. Reason to be barking right now. Bronies, good god. That's gonna haunt me. It should. I've had to I've had to think about it. Jesus. That's just ridiculous, dude. I don't even, I don't know, I don't get it. I mean, are, are they looking for attention? Are they literally a pedo, you know, pedo or fucking? Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's a show like for, for nine-year-old girls. And it's just, it's called Friendship is Magic. And magic is heresy. I saw, um, yeah, I saw uh, <laughs> What's-Her-Face put that up there. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's Oh. But yeah, it's basically they go around on, and they have these little missions and there's like unicorn ones and pegasus ones and regular horse ones and some of them have magic and some don't. Unicorn one, this is Arabian horse two. 
come in over. <laughs> I don't know. You said missions, so that's <laughs> wait tard stuff. And they do all this fun thing. And again, it's supposed to teach you to be with your friends and have fun with your friends and blah 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 blah. Oh, anyway. so be a, a collectivist. Got it. Yeah. Ah. Gotta be popular. You gotta do what everybody else is doing. Fuck you off. You gotta be an individual, just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't have that. You're 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 a threat to the system. Oh my gosh. Hold on a second. Yeah. Put her in the fucking one Leo and Lily were in. You're gonna have to charge him for a gate. There's nothing we can do. Hopefully that blanket will do it. But then the two little ones were trying that shit too. It's probably where she got the fucking idea. Do we put her and them together? No. I just lowered the blanket more so they can't see out. God damn, man. Yeah. They're, they're the same family, so are they panicked and should be together is what I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I There's can't. not a lot of room in there for those those three dogs. They're just annoying. What happens when you have animals that have no discipline? The owner is the guy who wanted to come out here and do the shooting. What, the guy that said, you know, I went to a course and blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, it, let him know I can help him because you went to a course. No, bro. 
I've had more than a few weapons in my day, and I would never be that arrogant <laughs> to say, hey, I can help you, bro. Bro, we hear it all the time. Could you not? All the time. Yeah. Just tell, just tell them they got to pay for the gate, that's all. I mean, that's, man. yeah, there's no fixing that gate. That dog, I'm trying to remember what it's, it's like, what kind of dog is that? Great Dane. Oh shit! Those things are horses. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's yeah, a they're big. usually pretty passive, though. That's interesting. Um, they they're usually pretty easy going, you know, well disciplined dogs. Of course, that's training too. So. Right. What country are they from? I don't know. Germany or something? I don't know. Well, got her and another Great Dane shipped in from Germany or some country. They're they're a puppy from. That country. I uh, just need to tell them she tore the gate up. To go all that trouble to ship a dog in and then I didn't get it yeah. trained properly. Yeah. And she's been here before. I just think. I don't remember her. She's been here once before. Was I here? I don't know. Probably. You're here all the time. I don't remember that dog. Yeah. I'm here all the time? Yes, you're here all the time. Where do you go? I go to Florida. Where do you go? She wasn't here like. Look, I go to the Warhammer 40,000 universe in my head. That's where I go. Okay, well, I'm just saying, yes, she and Ko were here once before. Theo is the new one. Well, then this dog got older then or something. Yeah, she was a puppy when she first came here. Now it's now she's, it was like a year ago that she'd been here once. Wow. Or eight months ago or something. No, I don't remember that. Can you I'll check, Lene, can you check on that, please? Yeah. One of those idiots are barking. Yeah, I put it all in my notes. notes. And then when they come back, I kind of have an idea. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I guess in a way, I don't really care because they're going to pay for the gate, but it is a pain in the butt to replace those gates. And now i got a cut thumb from the door. That's just a pain. I'm actually like just sucking it up right now. It should the skin should grow back, I would think. Yeah, probably. If not, it's not the first skin you've lost. No. <laughs> Part starfish. I'll just cut the whole thing off. <laughs> See if that grows back. Oh, it didn't grow back. That was a bad idea. Okay, kids, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Continue being a brony. They appear, apparently are smarter than I am. Dude, I'm telling you, you look them up, and it's going to be exactly what you think. Some big, fat neck beard. Oh, my God. Where, Lene, do you, where the three oh. parts is too small. That's right. I'm going to ask my wife's niece if she knows what a brony is. Brony? Brony. brony? So, apparently, it's a grown-ass man that's all about my little pony. What? Yes. She probably does. Oh my god. I'm sure. I'm, how old is the niece? Uh, 17. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, she'll know who a brony is. Probably knows a couple. Kareem, are you, Kareem, are you nice secretly guys. a brony? Kareem, you go to this high school with Lene. Do they have bronies? So Kareem doesn't know what a brony is. Okay. That, that's good. We, we've at least Apparently, got one in this I world. All so. right. So good, yeah, that's good so points in history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, what the hill? <laughs> Just look it up. I'm telling you, look it up. I'm it's, afraid it's to, cursed. dude. Probably it's bring me to image. some it's child porn imagery, site. Man. No, no, it's not going to do that, but you're going to see. Do you know what a brony is? No. You don't know either? Okay, good. That's good. Maybe they died out. I don't it's not know. like they're ever going to reproduce. Apparently a brony <laughs> is an adult male that's all into My Little Pony. Um, Whatever that is. I was thinking you might know that from high school because no. you guys have the cat people. Oh, no. We oh, yeah, you got cat people? Furries. Oh, furries? No. We have them bad. We have furries. She said no. they have them bad. Like Especially it's a, come Halloween. Like it's an infe oh, infestation. Do they, but do they do they have a litter box? <laughs> the high school here has a litter box. It's in this tiny little town. The weird okay. ones in, in band or and band? 
In band. In band. In band. Yeah, they, they're all. Well, I can't say that. I can't say. That. I was just about to say. Glad I caught myself. <laughs> Lots huh. of cat ears. Lots of cat ears. Yeah. Oh boy. Maybe that must tails. be the replacement. Do you guys make fun of them? Kind of. No. The stupid thing is, is that the baseball boys think it's funny to ask them for a picture. So now they think they're cool and they do it every day. Oh my God. Did you hear that? I heard it. Oh God. Yeah. I think it's on our high school page. Something like it's that. It's on a web page. Yeah. Oh jeez. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh gosh, this is your fault, Lenny. Okay. Your generation's fault. You guys should okay. have. There should Not have been a small anything. civil war, and you guys could have handled this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> totally joking. Actually, Brony and the cat ear thing is millennials' fault. Oh boy. Yeah, they so that, started that crap. That's my wife, then I think. Are you a millennial? I don't know. Eighty-four. You were born in eighty-four. Is that yes, millennial? Yes, I was born in eighty-four. Why does that make me a millennial? I don't know. I'm trying to, I, I don't remember all this um, stuff. Well, my Christine. daughter is one of the early millennials and she was born in 90, so yeah, I think Christine her wife just comes millennial. in at the very end of Gen X. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm a Gen X. What, what am I at 74? Do we even have a designated? You're, you're a Gen X, yeah. I was, I was born in 69, so you're the same generation as me. Huh. Well, it's probably right. Gen yeah. X. That, that would be an I, easy I, way I, to label us for I extermination. Watched, yeah, yeah. A comedian, because I never heard of Gen X until the other day. I watched this comedian girl who was saying, you know, you've heard of millennials, you've heard of this, you've heard of that, you've never heard of Gen X? Of course not, because we're the ones that the parents kicked outside and yeah. know, let back in. And, yeah, you know, that's you had true. to drink from the faucet and you had to Sur do this. It was survival of the she, fittest. Yeah. Go outside. Some if you're alive at the end of the day, you can come home. Pretty she much. Called it, we're the Home Depot kids. <laughs> because if you your parents weren't around to fix it, you just had to figure it out. They were like, climb that ten foot thing. Like as kids, you're like, are you hungry? Climb that ten foot thing up there and get that peanut butter sandwich your mom stuck up there and said you could get it if you wanted something <laughs> crazy like that. She's not wrong. <laughs> if you're hungry, well, there's freaking five thousand pecans on the ground that exactly. need to be picked up anyway. So, so go get them. And I've never heard of Jenny. Learn how to crack them open. Everything she yeah. said was like, yeah, that's exactly. Remember, I, if you remember, our generation was one they actually have it had to have an announcement come on the TV. It's ten o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Oh shit! <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, you didn't, didn't know or care. Yeah, you had the front porch light on. You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we were running around. You weren't allowed in the house. You and the animals were sent outside. <laughs> yep. I don't know, man. I just don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on with the world. That's why 40k is just like my escape. I just, I got all the racism and communism and isms that I need in it. <laughs> I don't need the rest of the world. Jeez. I'm actually, I think I'm at least... Making some progress here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, so seven, eight, eight, nine. Then try it, I don't know. Oh, you told him she ruined it? Because Vesna's so big. So that's why she felt like she needed her own space. Well, I put them all in kennel space six outside. Remember? Mm -hmm. It did fine. Yeah, I feel like they want each other. Well, just try it then, Lene, I guess. We'll see. Okay. You well, K and Theo and the Lily and Lily and Lily. With Vesna. The and problem Vesna. is trying to get them all in there together without them bursting out and running around crazy. I think they just feel all cooped up too. No, just grab the one, grab them by the collar. That's what I have to do. Yeah. Which one's the red collar? I don't know. I don't know their names. I don't bother with I that. Just know it's only the one. That Dog. Right 
every time from then on, it goes right after I go. I just kick him, kick him, kick him until he goes to the door. I don't know. I don't remember. It's on the labels on the shelf. Yeah. It says red collar, uh-huh. blue collar. So I think. Weirdo one and weirdo two. I think blue is because Vesna's orange, right? Yeah. Yes. Every so dog then in there hates. Blue is uh, Theo, and Ko, the female, is in the red collar. Yeah, I think I finally have a way to, like, I figured out how to put these gun arms on so that it goes relatively smooth. Which is gonna, man. So glad I learned it now. 400 is a lot yeah, of models. Even Murphy. They all get aggressive when those two come out. At least for me today, they've been. Because they just snoop around and they try to eat through the gates of somebody's food. And it's like, <laughs> why are you eating Ladybird's food through the gate? Oh my goodness. And then Opie's mad at them because they eat Ladybird's food. Yeah. See, it's like. I mean, these aren't bad models. They really you aren't. You put a bunch of people together, yeah. and you're going to find out that they got clicks and they don't like each other. Oh, like each That's other. crazy. I mean, none of them like those two. I'd say try it. But if you need help, then you should get help to do it. Oh, that's worrying, but he's too scared. No, I know. Well, <laughs> I can't. I, I'm afraid to walk down and up You're the good. Stairs. It's fine. And Rhino hasn't like barked at me or anything, or even growled or. It's yeah, that's something that pisses me off. But if you the lady wait, that gave us these uh, pit bulls to watch. Like okay. um, yeah, the I don't know if I told you this. Her ex or whatever, like, was training them to be aggressive okay, towards other dogs. Oh. I know, dude. I'd like to find that guy and punch him right in the face. your problem. I don't want to be separated and I, I had no choice but to be Well, together. sir, I am going to get for the night, but right it's good talking okay. to you. Um, yeah, are we going to do the training thing for Death Watch tomorrow? Or? Yeah, I need to. I need to get back into yeah. it to keep my, well, I'll just get back, you know, into explaining it all. Um, and I'm going to get back and start reading. I'm going to start reading some of the uh, Old New War, too. So if we ever want to launch that, I think it's going to be pretty much the same idea. I think it's the same rules. Yeah, yeah. So we're just going to have to scale down from Space Marine to dude with a laser rifle. <laughs> I don't think it'll matter that much. Yeah, hopefully not. It's just going to be a matter of scale at that point. Yep. Charlie, you're here. All right on, man. All right, take it easy. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, later. Later.
Um, well, they've always been my favorite uh, IG regiment, um, and I have an actual Death Corps uh, regiment, like from Forge World and everything. These are just models that I had that existed before, uh, actually before even the Steel Legion ex uh, existed. Um, I love everything about their sacrifice, um, you know, their devotion, if you will, to the Imperium, and just, I mean, they're, they're the, I mean, even though Games Workshop doesn't write it that way all the time, they are, you know, the most fearless, in my opinion, humans, slash clones, if we're going that route, um, you know, in the Imperium. So that's pretty much why that and gas masks are awesome. <laughs> Cadians never did anything for me. I got a few Catachan just because, but I never really liked them either. But when I bought these decades ago, they came out in 1998. And uh, I have 400 to put together because you got 80 in a box. I got five boxes, and uh, they only cost $40 back then for 80 miniatures. So, but they're great looking models too, even by today's standards. Something. Cool. I'm planning on getting a combat patrol box to play 500 point games against a buddy who's super into Warhammer. I'm just trying to see why people pick certain factions. So far I'm leaning orcs. Orcs are great. They really are. Um, anything Imperial Guard though, you'll you'll probably to be competitive or, you know, have a chance, I'd say. You probably do need to have quite a few troops. Um but orcs, orcs are fun. They really are. But you'll want more boys, too. I like orcs. I got, I've, I've got one of every army except for Votan. I just don't like them. I say I've got one of every army. I have tons of Space Marine armies. Uh, let's see. We've got my Armageddon Steel Legion IG. I also like the looks of the Terminator guys. Oh, the Space Marines? Oh, for sure. Yep, for sure. What does your friend play? And if you play Dark Angels, Space Marines, you could field a Deathwing cool. army. One SEC, I'll look at his message. Okay. Yeah, if you played, um, if you played Dark Angels, Space Marines, or at least with their rules you can field an entire Terminator army. They're the only ones that can do that though. So, if you don't like the look of the regular Space Marines or whatever and you just want those guys, that's an army you could do that with. Now, you wouldn't have that many models because they cost a lot in points. He has Guard, Tau, Space Marines, Tyranids, and Chaos Space Marines slash Cultists. I gotcha. Um... Yeah, I mean, like I said, if you if you really dig the Terminators, you could do Dark Angels, Deathwing, and then you could field an entire Terminator army. Again, you, you wouldn't have that many models in comparison to most Space Marine armies. Um, depending on your play style, you could be very competitive, or it could be a hindrance. It all depends on the mission, and, you know, I mean, of course, you're just getting into it, so there's that, but as long as you don't mind you know losing some games I don't know how competitive your buddy is or anything um, it wouldn't necessarily be that bad but here's my take on that and I try to push this on everybody if you play the game in terms of the lore or a narrative campaign in your own head at least doesn't matter if your buddy's doing it or not you cannot lose and you can't lose because there is a real thing such as economy of force um, and or uh, force multipliers to the point that even if he wiped out all your guys 
in your own head cannon or fiction, what you've done is your guys were there to delay or deny the enemy their ability to advance in whatever system, planet, whatever it is that you're you know you're doing. Um, again, this is you know your own thing, and they fought to the last man. While again in your secret head cannon, there were bigger armies or other detachments or other objectives that really needed to be accomplished, and all they were was a distraction. So they can never actually take the victory from you, if that makes sense. And orcs never lose because they, uh, you know, they're fungus, and every movement they make, they're putting Terminator. spores in the ground. The Terminator guys are the ones who can come back to life, right? No, oh, Termin. Oh, okay, you're talking about Necrons. And stuff. Why do you always make your head cannon a win? Because I'm, I don't play for tournaments anymore. I did all that when I was younger. I play for the narrative, and um. You know, I'm just saying if a person has a problem with losing, then that's a way to, to get around that. I'm not saying, I mean, you know, I don't really have that problem. But uh, And now I, I thought you were talking about Space Marine Terminators, or Space Marines and Terminator armor. You're talking about Necrons. Um, yeah, those are the guys that can get back up. But you also got... Um, Trent Cole. Okay. That'll probably help me in the beginning when I'm getting stomped. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, again, I mean, it's it's all on the person. Some people don't like losing, and some people are very sore losers, and some people are very sore winners. You know, it's just a way to, you know, if you're thinking about it again in a narrative fashion or fiction rather than just models on a table, roll the dice, so on and so on, you know, it's, it's definitely a way to, to get around that. You know, and make the game more enjoyable for you. Especially if you ever end up, not saying your friend, but you ever end up playing an opponent that you just can't stand. You know, like they're they're just not a good person to play with, but you just, you know, you want to, you know, you want to play the game. And you can, you know, that's something you can rationalize in your own head. And it works. It will definitely make the game more enjoyable to you. It'll allow you to let go of the the BS of whatever happened during the game. Whether the guy was cheating, not saying everybody cheats, but whether they were cheating, whether they were bending the rules a little bit. Um, and that I have run into in my whole time of playing. It's uh, And it's not fun. But if I tell myself, regardless of what happens on this battlefield, you know, I'm not here necessarily to win. I'm here to delay and deny the greater forces and the fiction in my head from being able to get to whatever objective or do certain things, you know, he doesn't, you know, and your opponent doesn't have to know, you know what I mean? Um, then it doesn't matter. It's kind of like, you know, like I was saying, orcs. Trent Cole. That's actually some really solid advice, man. Thank you. You're welcome. With orcs, you know, technically... I mean, they really can't lose because every movement they make, they're spreading spores into the ground. And while it may take a little while, according to the, the fiction, you know, you pretty much have to scour the entire planet of life, you know, in organics to be able to fully wipe them out. That's why they come back in resurgence from time to time, you know. So you beat them for now, but then they show back up because their little spores matured into orcs. Uh, Tyranids do the same thing a little bit, at least Trent in the fiction. Cole. I'm really into the whole it works because I think it does aspect of the orcs. Yeah. Yep. No, that's that's it's pretty awesome. And and that, that goes right along with what I just said. I mean you know, you're that's the fiction, of course, the orcs, it's actual canon. But I mean ultimately it's you know, they're believing it, so why can't you do the same with whatever game you play? Okay, so my orcs got killed. That's all right. You know, my war boss, or if you're the war boss, you sent those orcs in to be a, a distraction. You know, meanwhile, in your head fiction, you know, your orcs are doing something else. It's not like all the orcs are stupid. You know, unlike what most people think. I don't know why I 
I started doing that. <laughs> Trying to clear them. What's your overall number one army pick? Ooh, that's rough. Um, I don't, man. That's a that's a rough one. Uh, my favorite aesthetically that when I go downstairs and look at all my models that are in the shelves, the one I, the one I look at the most is my Krieg Death Corps. Um, I just, I love everything about them. And, uh, yeah, they're basically the silent, you know, killers, if you will, that, that never give up. But, that being said, uh, Tyranids, I've, the biggest army that I own is my Tyranid's army. It's probably really three different Tyranid high fleets because I've got stuff all the way from back in third edition that don't match up with the current stuff. And I don't mean 10th edition. Um, the stuff before 10th edition. And then when 10th edition came out, I bought a box set just because I wanted the new Screamer Killer. And um, those models are nice, but... I don't have a huge desire to buy really any more Tyranids except for Trinkle. one. Are you into Star Wars at all? I'm pretty sure the Death Corps look like Coruscant Underworld Police. Um, the Tyranids are the dinosaurs with guns, right? Well, they're not dinosaurs at all. They're just a biological alien life form that consumes, fights, and you know, kills everything on a planet, consumes it, and then turns around and is reabsorbed into the hive um to be reborn again some other time um i guess you could call them dinosaurs but they're not not even really close um yeah i am familiar with star wars uh i actually thought about getting into that miniatures game but right now i'm i mean i don't know there's i would cool. okay the model i saw was like a t-rex with a rifle um, I guess I'd have to see which one you're talking about, but I'm thinking you might be talking about a Carnifex. Um, maybe. Um, but if you if you know what it looks like, you know, um, maybe you could direct me to it or something. I'll Google it one SEC. Okay. Why you're not going in here? What is your problem? I haven't had a single problem until you. What the heck? Start to annoy me. Trying to get these 40 guys done tonight so I can move on to those 40 over there. And once that's done, this box will be done and we move on to the second box of five. I think the next box, I may actually turn their heads a little bit to the other way just to see if that works for me diversifying them at all. Wouldn't be nice. Termagants. Ah, uh, yeah, Termagants. Yeah, those are the base troops. Um, and they've got different weapons as well. But, um,. That's, you know, it's like a basic infantry guy. Like, if they went up against a space marine, they'd die right away. Like a single space marine. If, um, if they went up against an orc with an orc chopper, for sure, the orc would probably kill them right off the bat. 
assuming that you know they didn't kill the orc before they got there but of course they're fielded most of the time in groups of 20 so are orcs but and orcs aren't very good at shooting and I don't know that uh, I'd have to, I don't remember stats off the top of my head but the, the termagants or tyranids aren't exactly bad at shooting um, of course they're are the tyranids more of an overwhelming number but weak kind of army well they're not weak at all um, but they are about overwhelming but that's also dependent upon how you want to play them and the reason I say that is there's plenty of different uh, types of detachments if you will I think one of the ones that used to be out there was uh, the crusher stampede or something like that and it was mostly um, comprised of the bigger models um, and a lot of people hated going up against that because they were really tough to kill they could regenerate wounds or hit points you know however you want to look at it you know all that kind of stuff um, because they're, they're every, let me think about this here, I'm pretty sure, maybe not Eldar, maybe not Chaos, I don't know, every, every faction, if I'm not mistaken, it's some, in some capacity, has the ability, <coughs> excuse me, to regain, or at least has somebody, maybe not the whole army, but has somebody that can regain their wounds or get some back. Tyranids are one of those. Necrons, of course, are for getting back up. Blood Angels Death Company can do the whole feel no pain thing, so you could wound them, essentially kill them, but then they can roll on a dice and see if they don't die. But then they could turn around and use a Sanguinary Priest, unless this rule has gone away. I haven't played in a long time, like actually played. But they could use a Sanguinary Priest attached to them, and as long as he's alive, I believe every turn he can bring back another model. So, um, you know, there's, there's those types of things. Um, let's see. But no, I wouldn't call them weak by any stretch. So how useful is the Necron Resurrection vs. the Blood Angels one? Oh, it's pretty good. I mean, um, if, again, I'm speaking from what I can remember. Um, where the Blood Angels one is pretty much you know feel no pain they don't die so if you I think a four or five or six or maybe it was a five and a six after they've failed their save um, I think it's four five or six but either way if you had seven guys wounded for instance and you were able to make all those well it's no different really than Necrons however um, well and I would also say they don't have to be like that doesn't. They don't have to be in range of anybody like the Necrons do, like in a, a an aura or whatever. But you know, you're you're talking about one unit, maybe a couple of unit of Death Company, depending on if you can field a Death Company army, versus almost the entirety of an entire Necron army being able to pull that off. So. Um, I, I would venture to say that maybe the Necrons is better, but they're you know they're definitely not as strong and as destructive as the Death Company Blood Angels are or Blood Angels in general. Um, it's really going to be about your tactics. So if you're thinking survivability, my guys will be able to get back up, blah blah blah. That's not a guarantee, especially since you need that key character to have that aura that they have to be within range to even pull that off. It didn't used to be that way, but I guess it is now. It used to be they just, you know, any of them got up um, at the end of the turn if you rolled, I think, a five or a six. I'm sure I'll go more balls to the wall rushing. Yeah, well, I mean, if that's kind of what you're looking at, I wouldn't go with Necrons in because they, I think they're slower than everybody, first of all. Again, I'm trying to remember stuff that I've read um, as of late, but um, what you call it, uh, you know, Blood Angels are definitely like Death Company with jump packs. I mean, man, you're moving 12 inches at a time, not including your charges, um, not including running. Uh, your jump packs ignore terrain, you know, for, I mean, you know, like the, the distance that you would have to do to get in, into terrain. Um, 
there are if a, if you played a game where you had to worry about difficult terrain and landing in it that could be an issue because you could potentially lose your guys but you don't have to land in the difficult terrain unless somehow you pigeonhole yourself into something like that I have no idea how you would do that but um you know and they I mean they've got great close combat weapons you got the you know if you take a sanguinary priest along with or even a chaplain with a jump pack you know I mean you've got some super close combat ability but you gotta you know in a small game here let me let me tell you what you're gonna run into so the issue is you're gonna buy and you can correct me if I'm wrong you're gonna buy a combat patrol box so that you can play a 500 point game and you have what's in that box your buddy who's been collecting for a long time has a lot more options cool. than you do yes. so because he has more options than you and because he'll already know what's in your box regardless of what race you buy and the only thing that's going to help you win anything he also 3d prints a ton of his stuff there you go well maybe he can hook you up but the only thing that's going to get you by is going to be your tactics because if he has enough models okay he can basically try to sort of curtail his army to beat yours or be super competitive with yours if that makes sense and I mean there's just no way around that which is kinda of the whole idea of buying more and more models the you know the combat patrol thing is literally just a little like taste of the hobby to get you hooked really that's why we call this plastic crack tactics are key I've got an army I gave it to my wife but I have a salamander space marine army that I built back in 2003 nothing has ever been added to it or taken away and it's still undefeated. So, and it's all firstborn, no primaris or anything like that. So, it, it's possible, but that a big part of that is, of course, my tactics. You know, guys, math hammer this stuff, as they say. You know, statistically, you know, uh, how many you know hits you'll get, you know, based on whatever unit, blah blah blah. And it's there's something to that, but if you have the right tactics. In a lot of in a lot of ways, you can nullify those statistics, and I've had people argue that with me when I showed up to play, and that's kind of why I don't play anymore, because they counted on all of that. They bought their Trinkle. armies. Would it be better to go with a combat patrol or go to my local game shop and try to get a 500-point army with different troops? Also, that's cool that your wife is into it. My girlfriend wants the Drakari box to learn how to play with. Well, my wife's not into it. <laughs> she just, you know, I gave her the army and she doesn't want me to um, turn her. By math hammer, do you mean like min slash maxing it? Correct. You know, and again, the statistical dice roll, you know, of what, you know, what you'll get uh, when you roll your dice based on the unit that you have, how many you have, stuff like that. Um, but, uh... What was I saying? Um, oh shoot, I forgot. Um, yeah, your tactics are the key to everything. And a lot of that's going to come with, you know, studying, you know, your army, studying your opponent's army. Uh, I mean, I used to know everybody's rules backwards and forwards mainly because we had a 40-man gaming club and I was the vice president slash rules attorney, if you will. Trent Cole. So. You were talking about your wife. She's not into it, but has your old army? Right. She's not really, like, you know, into playing. Um, she's played with me a couple times, but it's, um, you know, just not a lot of time or anything like that. And it's, it's just not really her thing, but... You know, she, she'll she do it, I guess, you know, for me. Because she knows that it's a big hobby for me and where we live and stuff. There's not really anybody that plays anymore. And those that did, they, I don't know. 
but that's what I was going to try. Oh, I remember what I was saying about the tactics. You know, played this this guy. He bought a Space Wolves army off of eBay. Um, that was totally, uh, you know, like the meta. And um, he got so angry that you know he was losing. And there's there's not really anything I can do about that. You know, I mean. The dice are what they are, you know, everybody's going to have crappy dice rolls and stuff, but tactics matter, and, you know, if I'm, you know, holding my reserves for as long as I can, if, I'm, if I've got, you know, you, you brought your most powerful guy out that's got 10 wounds, that's great, but when I've got 30 guys with bullets that are half distance away at 60, you know, 60 shots, again, statistically, it doesn't matter, you know. Especially if I've enveloped you or flanked you or pushed you into a corner, you know, but again, that's an army. So there's a, I don't know if I can find it right now. I've got a picture of it somewhere, but there's a, sorry, my wife's yelling at a dog, but, um, there's a, there's a guy back when, you know, Warhammer was young and I can't remember his name, but what he said was. And I kind of took this to heart, I guess. He said, buy yourself a 2,000-point army. Put it together, paint it up as best you can, and then learn to fight with that army. Don't add anything. Don't take anything away. And just learn to fight with that army as best you can. Wins, losses, doesn't matter. Because you're going to get good with that army. And you're going to, you know, hopefully face other opponents, things like that. And when I say get good, you're going to learn all of the various tactics that you could possibly come up with with this, with this army. And then, and then some, you know. It's more than the math. You know, it really is. It's about what you do on the table. I mean, doing a feint. I don't know if you know what a feint is, but, you know, moving a sizable amount of your force or a force that, you know, or a portion of your force that looks like it's important going after something but really what you're doing is you're trying to draw your opponent into another area you know to do something they weren't really ready to do in the first place they think that you're trying to do something and they and they feel for whatever reason they've got to stop it the whole time it was just a distraction you know you would see stuff like that happen at the end of a game you know like your last turn you've drawn your your enemy into you know fighting you over here and you need that one last objective whatever and they may know this okay they may know this because they've been playing a while whatever but it doesn't stop the fact that they committed to what they thought you were doing and then in, in the last portion of the turn you turn around and seize the objective and that's the end of the game or you guys play like I used to which I think is better if you have the time um, where you uh Cool. Play okay. till annihilation. So you really gotta get into the head games. That thing to get them to move is smart. I'll have to steal that. Well, and I mean, it's not you know. I don't know if it's head games so much as it's military history. I mean, it's it's you know you're you're a general of the battlefield, and I mean, I use actual United States Marine Corps tactics because I'm a 30 year retired you know Marine, and. That's that's one of the things that you know I ha I guess you could say I have an advantage over other people on is all of those you know tactics and things like that. But uh, it may or may not be an advantage. You know, I mean, I could just have bad dice rolls that day. You know what I mean? So I mean, anything's possible. But yeah, I mean, knowing you know having tactics like that, like they, I don't know why they don't do this. I might have to get my stepdad to try. He's a retired Marine of like eight years, I think. Right on. Yeah, well, he would know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, it may not be his cup of tea or whatever, but he could definitely, you know, that might be something that does get him interested. You know, and then he teaches you some things, you know, what an action right is, what a flanking move is, you know. Um, you know, feints, lining up fields of fire. I mean, there's all, all sorts of things. And um, it, it's really about as far as you know you really want to take it. I need more time. Go on. So. Go on. Go on. I don't want you hitting my foot. Go. 
I know the chairs are normal. Yeah, that's really, really what this game, in my opinion, boils down to. And if you get to the point where you feel like the tactics just aren't working or whatever, you gotta find other Trent ones. That's Cole. what being a general so do is. The individual weapons you put on them matter. I've seen YouTube videos where they change out parts that came with the model. So yes, um, if and if you're able to do any type of magnetization. Um, you know that will help your money go a long way because you're going to have extra parts and weapon options that being said when it comes to tournaments it's what's called WYSIWYG what you see is what you get and that's what your opponent should be able to look at your models and know okay these guys have these weapons and then they're able to you know to, to you know fight against that not you put on whatever and in a tournament anyway and then it keeps people from going, oh, well, this guy really had this because, I mean, you've been playing for so long that day, you may or may not remember all the weapons that are there. That's why you need to be able to just look at it and go, okay, this guy has a melted gun, this guy has a barbed strangler, this guy has, you know, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it, that does matter. Now, if you're like these guys right here, you know, I mean, they're not. Trent Cole. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, these guys aren't Games Workshop models. But as a proxy Imperial Guard army, and since, you know, they're not ever going to be, you know, with a ton of models and stuff, I mean, uh, weapons and things like that, just what they have, you know, it'll be really simple to say, hey, look, these are all LAS guns, or these are, you know, count as LAS guns, or whatever. But I would never be able to pull that off in an actual sanctioned tournament. It would just be like in a casual game with a friend or something. Trent Cole, could you use those in a tournament? These or no. Do they have to be official? Uh, I believe the current rule is your model has to be at least 80% uh, Games Workshop model. Now again, I mean we're talking like an actual Games Workshop sanctioned tournament. If it was like your friendly local gaming store and they didn't care, then you could probably you know I mean I'd ask first of course. And then the other 20%, they allow for 3D printed stuff. Like if you wanted just a you know a different head, you like the way that looked or whatever you know something that you know, was more your style. However, it cannot be something that you purchased. It has to be something you made yourself 3D printed. How they would know that? The only way I could think is if they were you know they saw it and they were like, okay, well let's go look online. If they took the time to do that, I have no idea. Um, that's the only way I think they could figure that out. But it's not something you see a lot of. You know, but they're still trying to say that they are allowing conversions and stuff like that. You know, but I just don't see a lot of it these days. I think most people don't really... Most of your tournament players, they don't really care as far as, like, converting stuff and all that. They just do what they have to do to get into the tournament, throw on three different, you know, colors of paint... And that's it. And um, and then they'll turn around, you know, when the meta changes, <laughs> they will turn around and sell the army on eBay and buy another one, to be honest. It's just the way it goes. Cole. So tournament guys don't really stick with one main army? Just the meta? 
I mean, makes sense, but that's kind of annoying for variety. Well, the guys that are serious about winning, like the Nova GT, which is in Northern Virginia, or the Las Vegas Open, and things like that, yeah, they don't care. They're not. I'm not. You know, I'm probably speaking out of turn here, but from what I gather, the serious players that are there just for the competition, they're not always necessarily a hobbyist like you and I. You know, they're there to win, and, you know, that's what they do. They spend their time min-maxing, you know, going over the, the stuff to figure out exactly, you know, what's needed to win, and that's all that matters to them. And, I mean, that's the way they want to play, and that's the way they want to hobby. I mean, I get it. It's annoying. It's part of the reason I don't play anymore, or, I'm sorry, I don't do tournaments anymore and haven't for years. Um, that and rude attitudes. Um just you know the way some of these guys will treat younger kids that are playing and stuff like that because they don't know how to control their stinking emotions over a damn game but um you know kid doesn't know the rules or yelling at him or something like that had that happen in a tournament one time and i lit that dude up there was no reason for that crap i mean the kid was like i think six years old seven years old and you know he was just there to play had no idea what he was doing and that's fine and the guy that was yelling at him was like he had to be in his late 20s so I forfeited my game went over chewed the guy's butt and then uh, I said some other things that I won't repeat on here because I don't want to get banned <laughs> and um, and then I told the kid I'll play you and then I let the kid win you know I mean it wasn't that important to me to win a tournament. It's just, it's just a game of toy soldiers, you know. And unfortunately, I've only seen it get worse because that was like, I think I was in my mid twenties when that happened. So I've only seen it get worse from here. Trent Cole, that would be awful. I'm in the middle of the Midwest, so not a ton of options or a ton of players. Hopefully everyone at the shop closest to me is chill. That's especially bad to do to a little kid like that FR. Yep. Well, and that's something, you know, that maybe you do before you buy. Maybe you go to some of these things and watch how everybody interacts with each other, you know what I mean? Just kind of hang out, you know, stuff like that. Because unfortunately, you got to, you know, and I hate to say it this way, but it's true. You got plenty of nerds in there that don't have, you know anything else going on with their life and I, I'm calling them nerds as I call myself a nerd you know they they've never grown up you know mentally and if they don't know how to lose you know with dignity it's not somebody you're gonna want to or you're gonna enjoy playing with I can tell you that you're you're gonna be like why the heck did I waste my money and get in this hobby you know all kinds of stuff and your buddy's gonna I mean I don't know have you, have you watched your buddy play you know, that's another thing. Maybe he's not a good sport, you know? No, I get what you mean. I've played some D&D &D with a few people like that. Well, there you go. Then you know exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? There's just... There's nothing you can do about it. But hats Trent off Cole. to you for... I haven't watched him play. I could probably ask to watch his next game, though. I would, you know, and I'm, and again, I'm not knocking your friend at all, but just go and watch, you know. I mean, just just show up, say, hey, man, you know, I'm gonna go to the store with you when you play or whatever or wherever it is, you know. And you don't have to tell them why, you know. You're just learning the rules or whatever, and just see how things go, you know. See how he reacts, and maybe that's something that you talk to him about too. He's like, hey, man, you know. I mean, let's just say he flies off the handle for whatever reason. I don't know. You know, again, I'm not I'm not bashing your friend. He may not. He may be the coolest dude on the planet and somebody I would want to play with. But you realize that, you know, for whatever reason, he's, you know... Here, here let me let me put it this way. Because I really don't want to sound like I'm bashing your friend because I don't want to do that. The last game that I played that I told you about, right? This is how it went down. So, uh, in the th fourth turn... This guy was playing a Space Wolves Medalist, okay, that he got off of eBay. In the fourth turn, after he's moved his, I think it's a Long Fang, no, not Long Fang, uh, 
Oh gosh, whatever that ship is that the Space Wolves have, I have one. I've just never used it, um, so I'm not really familiar with it. Um, but it's it's a ship that's strictly for the Space Wolves. It can carry troops, or it has some crazy weapons on it that it can do some some serious damage. Trent Cole, I worked with him for like six months at Walmart. You know him about as well as I do. Okay. He once told me like eight hours of lore and about his games. And that's the only reason I know he's into Warmer Big. I gotcha. Well, anyway, on the fourth turn, this guy says after he's got this ship in position, like really good position, that he forgot to fire at me with his guns in turn one. When I say he was in good position, it wasn't just for him, it was also in good for permission or position for me to blast it out of the sky. And he realized this, like, almost instantly after he moved and committed to the movement and went into the shooting phase and he said hey man I forgot to fire back and you know fire at your guys back in turn one can I shoot at them now basically to get two sh you know two times to shoot at my people and I said no I can't really allow that now if it would have been the turn prior yeah I just said yeah no problem but not three turns later and all of a sudden you realize that you're in trouble you know what I mean and uh, and he got really upset. He's like, "Oh, that's you know, that's bullshit." Blah blah blah, and this and that. And and I was like, you know, in my head, I was like, "Dude, I, I didn't drive an hour and a half down here to play at this store, which is the only place I can play to listen. You know, drag all my models and everything else down here to listen to this crap. It's not worth it to me." So I stuck my hand out to shake his hand, and he took my hand, not really realizing what was going. On. I said, "You know what, bro? I gotta go. I, you know, it was a great game. Appreciate it. You know." Just basically let, you know, just going to walk away, right? And he yanks his hand back. He's like, oh, that's bullshit. You know, blah, blah. And just started yelling and screaming. And I'm like, whatever. And I've never been back. You know, it's, you just never know how people are. And it's, you know, I'd rather sit here for hours on end putting models together that may never see a battle in their life than put up with that nonsense. So if you have the ability to go watch a game, watch a friend play, or watch other people you might be ending up playing with, I would do it before you invest in the in the money. You know, unless you just want to do it because you like Trent putting Cole. stuff together. The shop close to me is an hour. I'll have to go watch before I play there. Yeah, I would definitely do that. How far away does your friend live? Or where you guys would actually be playing, I would say. Trent Cole. Same town as me. Okay. Because, I mean, if he's not someone you end up wanting to play with, and that, that would suck too. This is not a cheap hobby. It used to be a lot cheaper, but it's not now. That's for sure. I get a lot of people asking me what they should start out with and all this kind of stuff. I say, first off, do not buy from Games Workshop. Look for whatever you want on their site if you want to, which the website sucks right now. It used to be at least a little bit better than what it is. But then go look on Amazon or eBay for the same thing for, you know, or some other third-party retailer for at least, you know, 15 to 20 percent off the price. That's what I would do. That's what I do when I buy stuff. I don't ever buy from Games Workshop. Do you like listening to podcasts or... Uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that, lore or anything. Cole. Yeah, I've been listening to Myth Keeper's Pathfinder series for a while. 
There's a channel out there I listen to called Northern Exile. The guy used to be a games workshop manager and stuff. He talks about that kind of stuff as, as well as hobby nightmares. Um, he mainly does the channel like for, you know, people's well-being, like mental health, like mainly guys' mental health and stuff like that. That's a passion of his. You might want to check it out. He's got some good, good stuff in there. And, of course, you can hear some of the horror stories and things like that. I've actually thought about writing into him with some of mine, but I don't really feel like it right now. I just want to enjoy what little bit of time I have with the hobby anyway. And I've got thousands of miniatures still to put together. So, I mean, these guys right here, you know, when I finish this box, which will be 80, I still have four more boxes of 80 to put together of just these guys. And then... I gotta go. I get back to actual games workshop Control. models. What are the basic tools you use? Uh, pretty much. You mean putting it together? Basically, what you see right here. A um, little Exacto knife. Nothing high speed. Real cheap. Walmart version or whatever. Crazy glue. I don't buy rubber cement because if there's any reason you ever need to break an arm off or something like that, most of the time it'll pop off. If it won't. You can get this kind of stuff, uncure, that you can put on it and it will eventually cause the glue to become brittle so you can snap it off. And a pair of Walmart clippers. Um, and that's it. And when the, with the blade, so this is actually a very dull blade. All right, you use the clippers to do most of the cutting, cutting, but the dull blade here, and I mean it's dull, okay? Look at that, I'm not even cutting myself. The reason I use a dull blade versus my sharp one over here, this is a brand new blade, is because I can scrape and do all kinds of things without cutting too deep into the plastic and messing up. Also, I use sanding twigs or sanding sticks, whatever they're called. I think they're called sanding twigs. But you can get these on Amazon, like a tub of them, real cheap, all different uh, grits. Um, to really, you know, take off mold lines and things like that instead of having a big piece of sandpaper, you know, to try to get around your model and messing things up. Um, so that's basically what I use. Um, now when it comes to painting, depending on what I'm doing, everything from airbrushing to normal, normal, uh, you know, paint brushes and paints, you do not need to get citadel paints they are good but they're super expensive you can water down just about any paint or thin it i mean to say uh, even uh, paint from uh, walmart like the apple apple barrel paints and stuff like that and sometimes you find colors like that that games workshop just doesn't have and what i have found is that if you want a color that doesn't exist in their lineup or army painter or vallejo i've got all those kinds of paints um then uh what am i trying to say you can uh you can go to places like michael's or walmart or something like that some you know some kind of normal retail store find the paint you need so you don't have to mix them and you're going to get it a, a lot more of it and a lot cheaper and then if you just get some basic thinner or even water it down um, so that it goes on smoother I'm telling you you're, you're gonna you're gonna love what you're gonna love the result These guys, while I'm putting them together, I won't do it tonight, but I'll go back and um, make sure that I hit all of the, the little raised spots. I did what I had to do to get them put together so that, you know, that stuff's not being touched. I'm sorry, uh, not sticking out and causing the model not to go together correctly. But the rest of it I can always get later, like what's on top of his head, etc. Okay, thank you. You're For welcome. my D&D minis, I've just been using basic acrylics. Yeah, that's all you need. Basic acrylics, dude. The key is thinning your paints. That's the key. If you don't, 
you're gonna you're gonna lose detail you know you're gonna put on layers that you really didn't want to and um, also there's a, another really important step when you put color on okay just do one thin coat and let it dry if you keep going after it like you know your paint and you're like oh I you know I I scraped off some paint right there let me paint back over it you're just gonna keep scraping pigment off don't do it let the whole thing dry and then go back over it again and if you need to get you a little desk fan or something that'll blow on your minis it won't take long for all that stuff to dry but again thin your paints and take care of your brushes that's another big thing um, let me put this on and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm talking about uh, so let me see oops fell right off I guess I didn't put it no. let me see here all right so now this is just an old brush that I use for glue and stuff but maybe this isn't the best example hold on I need a brush that's got some actual bristles <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm not the guy, okay, well this isn't a brush, but you'll get the idea. And I don't know all the, the sexy terminology that's out there, but basically, if this, these were your brush hairs, right? Let me get up here close. What, whatever you do, you don't want to get probably any further than where my nail is impacting this brush right here. Or this, this is actually, um... A shaping tool for um, like green stuff and things like that you don't want the paint you know to get really any further up than that if it gets inside here it will rot and mess up your brush um, when you when you actually you know always try to use as much clean water as you can when you go to, to paint I'm not saying every time you need to have something but when you go to wash out your brush and you should you also want to make sure that you shape your brush. Now they do make some wax and stuff like that for your brush, kind of like think of it like conditioner for your hair, and it may even be called brush conditioner. You don't necessarily need that unless you've got a really damaged brush um, or one that's just really messing up on you. As a matter of fact, in a lot of ways, I end up trimming off parts of my brush when they get really stupid. Um, but really you just want to make sure that you don't get any paint forward of about that far that that would be the maximum I, I would really just try to stick you know halfway if you can if that makes sense and that's that's key so after you wash your brush obviously store them up you know upright don't you know I mean if you had a hanger where you could store it down shape it and do that that's not bad most people don't have that you could make one out of a freaking clothespin attached to something you know or whatever but the main thing is make sure it's not laying down, you know, it's not sitting in a cup of water, you know, until your next time that you're ready to use it or any of that kind of stuff. Get that thing clean and then shape it and then leave it to dry. And you will be a lot happier. And I also use, now this is a bigger one, I've got a smaller one over here. Um, I'll show you. Actually, this is probably, I'm glad you asked me. You're gonna want some type of you know drill. As you can see, this one's a lot smaller, and you want one that has uh, the back end spins like this. So that way you can put it in your hand, leave it in your hand if you will, and then you can spin without it actually moving out of your hand. And you're gonna want that for anything where you think you might want to drill the gun barrels, like I did on this Space Marine Terminator. Now, a huge mistake that most people make is they think to get the effect of the barrel that they need to drill in pretty far. You don't. All you've got to do, press in enough to get the drill stuck in a hole. You know, you make your own hole by pressing in and then just drill just enough to make, you know, that little indentation. That thing's probably not even a sixteenth of an inch. Because when you paint this, you're going to have the look that you want of an actual barrel. These were, you know, I drilled both of these. You can probably already tell that. But um, that's, you know, you'll want that for many reasons. Um, matter of fact, hold on. 
So here we have, I can't remember if I did this one or not, but here we have a Primaris model that has, I don't think I drilled that one. I think that's how that one came. And then here we have a Primaris model that came in some kind of magazine subscription. You see how there's no, there's no barrel right there, right? There's something in the way though. So what I'm going to do, and forgive me for putting it down like this, I just, I get my hand stable. Actually, hold on a second. Where is my thing? Okay. I'm just going to, let me scrape that off. I don't know what the heck that is. All right, anyway, I'm going to find the center as best I can. I'm going to press in so that way my drill has a hole that it bites in. Does that make sense? And then I'm just going to gently twist it. I can't even tell you how many gun barrels I have to do. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. I don't need to go... I don't need to go any deeper than what you just saw me do. That way I don't have to worry about blowing out the, you know, the whole thing here. It's, that, it's, it's literally that easy. T. T? Tranquil. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> gotcha. And I mean, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I mean, for the longest time before I ever got a hand drill, I just painted a little black dot on there to show, like, something. But it's... I don't know. Once you once you advance in what you're doing with this hobby, it'll probably get on your nerves, and you'll you'll want to go back and hand drill everything. But I mean, you saw how simple it was for me to do it. You know, it's it doesn't take long. Trinkle. Now, I probably will get one. That makes a huge difference, look wise. Right. Well, again, I would encourage you not to buy stuff from Games Workshop. They're not selling you anything that is groundbreaking that's gonna um you know just i mean look at that dude you know where, where did i get this i don't know i don't remember where i got this but it's not a games workshop hand drill and this bit right here didn't even come with this i got this at a hardware store for a dremel I mean, try to stretch your dollar as much as you can. Now, something like this, this one might be a challenge for me. You know what I'm saying? But what I would probably do, because I mean, I just don't have a bit that's that small. But what I could do is I could drill out the center. I'm actually curious about this myself. Let's see here. This might actually work. got a little bit bigger drill bit here because it's already got it's already got little hole little tiny holes here but this whatever this part right here is kind of ruins it and I think it's just the way that they did um, their mold and I may actually need a little bit bigger drill bit but I'm afraid to do that because um, yeah I do need a bigger one I don't want to go too far, but we'll see. hold on a second. Let me see here. Maybe not. Yeah, that's not too bad. And now there's the difference between that and this. And while obviously the bullets wouldn't be coming out of that big hole I made, it gives the other barrels the appearance of separation, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, would it take me five seconds or ten seconds? So. And now, those 40 guys are done and we just have those 40 of this box to go <laughs> oh well I say they're done I need to you know trim them up a little bit at least they're playable we'll put it that way that's all I wanted to get done tonight
Crazy Glue should freaking sponsor me or something with all the Crazy Glue I use. And I get it from the dollar store too. You can actually order it. And it's a lot cheaper than Walmart, believe it or not. I have to worry about, I got two little ones, so I have to worry about how I store my stuff too. But yeah, I mean, that's it's kind of. Cool. It does make them look a lot better. Do you plan on using those models soon? Um, I, I plan on getting all of them put together, all 400. Um, the other guys, let me pull them out here. The other guys look like this. So a little bit different. More like a Prussian type thing versus, you know, say this, these guys here. Those are the two forces in the box. Um, but, uh, now, I mean, I'm... I don't know when I'll ever get a chance to really play a good 40k game. Right now we're doing Death Watch RPG every Saturday at 8, 8 p.m. Well, not this Saturday because of the holiday, but um, we'll be I'll be practicing with a guy because I'm I'm a brand new GM and I'm playing in the game as well as in a Space Marine Apothecary, and I wrote an entire campaign and everything and. I actually need to make a video on the whole briefing of the whole thing so but uh, now I don't know when I mean I have no idea but they're just you know they're just gonna be basic Imperial Guard of some regiment of some planet whatever doesn't really matter Trent Cole, are you going to stream it um, the death watch yeah we stream that when we play there, if you go on my YouTube, because you're on Twitch, I, well, it, it might be on Twitch still, and look at session two. Session two, I mean, again, everybody's learning the rules for Death Watch and all that stuff, but um, towards the, you know, I give a brief uh, opening of what happened in the previous game, um, and the reason I had to do that was because for some reason my microphone wasn't working during session one, and nobody knew about it because they could hear me through discord and everything but um we had no idea that i wasn't being picked up on youtube or twitch so you'll hear them you don't you'll see the brief in the middle but you don't really know what's happening you just see a slideshow so anyway i did a brief introduction uh in the second session to kind of make up for that but we had some shenanigans happen uh, our librarian almost killed me by accident uh, by almost killing himself um, one of our guys, when they breached a wall, almost killed himself. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that was going on. But um, it's a good group of guys. Three of us are actual military veterans. The other two guys are friends of ours that are really cool dudes. Um, anywhere from age 54 to, I think, 22 or 23 years old. So, I mean, you're more than welcome to, you know, hang out with us. And um, I... For that kind of stuff like like tonight I just kind of you know decided I wanted to get online and do this stuff and um, I haven't been online and you know probably seven months uh, just because of school and stuff like that but um, you know I've been on or I say I've been online the last three weeks but before that it was about seven months and so now I'm trying to get back to it you know here and there but major events like that, I actually put out the whole scheduling thing through Restream, so. And of course, you know, uh, I don't know how Twitch actually works with stuff like that, but um, if you check it out on YouTube and subscribe, you'll definitely know. So. Well, I am going to call it a night, and I appreciate it, man. It was great meeting you. But I have to actually get up early, so <laughs> just wanted to get that done and whatnot. Trent Cole, YouTube buddy, I'll check out your YouTube. All right, man. Trent Spread Cole. the word if you don't mind. Good night. All right, man. Take it easy.